uh, I'm gonna, going to go ahead and officially get started here uh, in about 10 seconds. Looks like we're, we're right at the start. And I want to welcome all of you to today's session, today's event, where we're going to go deep with the guy that you see here on the screen, Mike Robinson at Summit Direct Mail, to learn how they've been able to grow their organization to over 40 million in revenue by doing some really creative and unique things with direct mail and digital channels, OptiChannel. And so this is a brand new series. If you were here last week, drop an X in the chat, wherever you happen to be, and Zoom, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. If you were here with us last week, this is a brand new series uh, where we're going to go deep for you on how to market, sell, and lead your organizations through this time of crisis. And what we want to help you do is learn how to be effective in this completely new dynamic that we all find ourselves in by hearing from people like Mike Robinson today who are actually making it happen. This is for you. If you're an agency, we have a lot of agencies here. If you're a printer in commercial print, if you're a B2B company, a B2C organization, I'm actually going to ask you in a moment to answer a poll so we kind of have a sense for who you are. Um, but regardless of whether you're in leadership, you're in sales, or you're in marketing, this is something that is going to help you. And I'm really honored that you're all here with us today. We're live across all channels. If you just jumped in, you haven't missed anything yet. Over there in LinkedIn, drop a hello. In Facebook, say hi. In Zoom, give us a hey over there in Zoom. We're live in all of those channels. McKinsey has also given you my cell phone number. Um, I have my uh, text application up over here on my right-hand side, so I can see questions and comments as they come in through text as well. Looks like a few of you have already started that. So stay interactive with us. This is going to be an exciting session. In case we've never met, maybe you've seen, seen Mindfire before, you've seen me, but I want to very quickly introduce me, uh, myself, and I want to introduce Mindfire. I don't want to spend much time doing that because it's really all about Mike today. Uh, but my name is Dave Rosendahl. I'm the president and co-founder at Mindfire. Over the years, we've worked with thousands of organizations, um, commercial print companies, uh, 3D print companies, uh, agencies, B2B organizations, B2C organizations. And in every case, what we're helping companies do is solve the tough, tough challenge that a lot of organizations face right now, which is that when you try to reach your customers and prospects using what used to work maybe last year, five years ago, 15 years ago, stuff just doesn't work the way it used to. What's missing is the opti-channel um, philosophy, and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Times have changed. What used to work just doesn't cut it. So at a very high level, that's what we help companies do through our software, uh, through our agency, and through training like the one that you're in today. So that's a little bit about me. Now I want to get to know you. What I'm going to do is I'm going to launch a poll. I recognize a lot of the names here, but there are many that I don't know. So in a moment, uh, I'm going to launch this poll here. You should see it on the screen. I got three questions for you. If you're in LinkedIn, just drop the answer. Or if you're in Facebook, drop the answer. Question number one, which of the following best describes your company? Are you a printer, an agency, or a marketing services company? If you're none of those two, then are you a B2B organization or a B2C company? Drop that in Zoom. Uh, answer the poll in Zoom. Drop it in LinkedIn and Facebook. That's question one. Question two, how many people are in your company? Self-employed, 1 to 10, 11 to 50, 51 to 200. In Zoom, you can see all the options. Just let us know in Facebook and LinkedIn. That's question two. And then question three, I'm going to leave up these questions here for another 15 seconds. What's your role? Are you the owner, partner, uh, CXO, VP, director, senior level, mid-level, entry level? Let us know. I'm going to leave this up for just a few more seconds here. Kevin, I see you're in marketing services over there in LinkedIn. Rob is a printer. Michael is a printer. Barry is printer B2B. All right, five seconds. Five, four, three, two, and one. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share the results. And uh, let's see what we got here. So we've got 62% of the audience uh, identifying as printers, 22% uh, identifying as agency or marketing services, 16% B2B, and no B2C. That's interesting, Mike, huh? Um, the, the winner here in terms of the size of the organization appears to be very close between 11 to 50 and 51 to 200. And most of you here are in ownership, uh, you're a partner in the organization, or you're at the CX level, uh, CXO level, followed by VPs, and you can see uh, the results uh, thereafter. So those are, those are your peers here today, folks. Thank you for answering that. 
Um, what I want to do is uh, bring aboard uh, to the stage here in just a moment, our special guest today, Mike Robinson. Uh, he's the Director of New Technology and Business Development at Summit Direct Mail. Before I formally introduce him, what I want to do is tell you how we're going to run this session, okay? We received hundreds, probably even close to 1,000 questions from all of you on LinkedIn, on Facebook, Zoom, email, text, asking Mike uh, to understand more about how they've been successful at what they're doing. And so what we had to do was go through all your questions. We had to pick out the buckets of what kind of stood out most um, so that we can get Mike's insight and his guidance. I expect that as we go through this material today, more questions are gonna come up. That's why I've given you my cell phone number. That's why I'm asking you to chat in Zoom and in Facebook and in LinkedIn, because at the end of today's session, about 60 minutes in, we're gonna leave another 30 minutes on the clock to answer all of your real-time questions, okay? So during the session, ask in Zoom, Facebook, LinkedIn. McKinsey is going to collate some of the good questions for me to be able then to ask uh, Mike live. Um, at around an hour in, we're going to go live and answer all the questions that come in in real time. So that's how we're going to do it today. I want to take a moment to formally introduce Mike Robinson, uh, who you see here on the screen, and I'm going to bring him on video in just a second. I've had the um, really the honor of knowing Mike for... I think it's been about 13 or 14 years now. And over that time, I've learned so much from, from him, from John Barber, who you saw in the, in the background there a moment ago, Ben Shank, who I think is also here, and uh, many others at his organization. And I've watched, I've had the, the ability to be able to watch as they've innovated, as they've created unique solutions for their customers, and as they've grown. And where so many companies and people have failed uh, to be able to advance beyond just print, if I can say that without being offensive to anyone, they've managed to always push the envelope forward. They've managed to innovate uh, where many just have not. And 99% of that comes from Mike and his team and the fact that they're always looking for better ways to service their clients. And so, you know, I kid you not, we work with thousands of companies, but, and Mike, I'm not saying this just to fluff you up, but there are very few people, if any, that I have ever found as focused and customer obsessed as Mike and his crew. You might think I'm just saying that, but really uh, by virtue of the fact that we've been able to work with Mike over these years, Mike, you've made our company stronger and you know what I mean by that, right? I've learned so much from you. I consider you a friend. Um, also the kind of guy that I would always want and the foxhole with me, um, your knowledge of marketing and sales and your pursuit of what's right for the customer is it's just, it's just so unique. And so with that, please join me uh, in welcoming Mike to the show. Give me a bunch of exclamation marks in Facebook or in LinkedIn or in Zoom. I know Mike can see the chat. Give me a bunch of exclamation marks and some likes. I want Mike to see your excitement here in the chat so he knows you're excited. And Mike, thank you for being on the show. Welcome, man. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, Dave. Glad to be here. <laughs> Did you like that introduction? Did I do it justice? It was good. You, you forgot to mention the uh, the uh, nine ten midnight calls that we've had yes. where they weren't so they weren't so nice. That's right. Well, that's the what the is all about, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yep. We'll we'll get in it, we'll we'll get into that more today, folks. As I uh, worked with Mike and our team to prepare, you know, there were some places where Mike was like, "Oh, maybe we shouldn't say that. Maybe I shouldn't say that about you or or Mindfire." And I'm like, "No, dude, tell them. We're here to share. We're here to inform." And so we're not going to leave any uh, any stone unturned. Thank you, Mike, for being here. What I want to do now, Mike, we got so many questions about Summit, about how you started, what you've done to grow. And we're going to get into a lot of those specific questions, as you know. But I thought it'd be great if we could just start with just like a, a very short overview of the milestones that you see here on the screen. How'd you start? When did you start? And what were some of the big major milestones along the way to get us to the present day? Sure. Appreciate it. So again, thank you for having me. So uh, Summit was founded in 2003 by John Barber. Uh, back in 2003, uh, John and I had a performance-based marketing company, and we were we were sending all of our business to a an outsource to a printer and a net letter shop. And at some point in time, they basically said we're going out of business. So at that point in time, John did an asset purchase and founded Summit Direct Mail. Um, we started. We were very fortunate, so we started with some customers um, and since then we've grown. But uh, so again, 2003, founded Summit Direct Mail. 
Uh, 2007s when we when I really first met Dave and his team when we started using just traditional personalized URLs, not marketing automation, just straight up personalized URLs. Uh, so we've been using them for you know 13 plus years, and you know we love it. Um, back in 2009, um, we were a traditional letter shop. Uh, we outsourced print, uh, and in 2009, uh, we in the Dallas Fort Worth area we basically didn't have uh, a place to put put our print that we were you know happy with and, and wanted to run it. So uh, we did an asset purchase of a 32 year old web uh, uh, web offset company. Uh, it was called Lone Star Web. Uh, we picked that up and we named it Texas Offset. Uh, that time we also started uh, a foray into variable digital printing. Uh, we purchased two Indigo 7000 uh, series printers and started offering variable digital printing. And, and back then, as you, most people probably realize, you weren't really doing two true variable digital, you were using them as short run printers. Uh, 2015, uh, World Marketing uh, closed its doors and they had some opportunities in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, we hired 65 of their employees and started uh, our fulfillment and transactional business. 2016, uh, we actually purchased a web to print platform focusing on franchises, real estate agents, et cetera, uh, where people can go in, pick a template, draw a map around some area, an area that they want to target, uh, swipe a credit card and have the, have the piece go out. Many, many people probably on here have web to print platforms, but we picked up that platform and it's, it, it's been pretty successful for us. Uh, 2019, uh, these last couple of years have been very large for us. Uh, 2019, we added a Konica Minolta KM1, which is a 23 by 29 sheet, uh, significantly bigger than the, the Indigo. Uh, and then uh, this year, uh, we actually did a, an asset purchase of the Hard Hanks Direct Mail Division, and we are now the production facility for Hard Hanks clients. Uh, we had also, you know, we've added an additional um, take a step back. We actually, back in 2000, I believe it was 16, we also added the a single screen ZZ press. Uh, 2020, we added a screen HD press, a second ZZ press, and probably to date this year, we've probably spent about six and a half million dollars in new technology uh, to increase capacity, speed, high speed inserters, high speed uh, inkjet, et cetera. And that's where we are today. Amazing, Mike. Well, congratulations on that. And uh, hats off to you and John and, and everything that, that you folks have been able to do. If you have questions for Mike about their history, anything like that, any of the equipment that they use, like I said, we're going to leave plenty of time for uh, questions. Um, and I know that um, from what I understand from you and from your, your crew, Mike, you're currently focused on high-speed VDP production um, with your high-speed cutter and folder, your inserters uh, and color inline ink jetting. As I looked at uh, kind of your history with, with MindFire, as well as just kind of understanding what you do with your clients, I know that literally, and correct me if I'm wrong, you've printed billions of direct mail and mailed billions of direct mail for a variety of industries, many of them that you see here on the screen. I listed some of the top ones that I know that you service, uh, financial services being mortgage, personal finance, auto, uh, nonprofit, retail, home services. You do a lot of work for the government, uh, healthcare, and I know there's a lot of other industries as well, but let's get into the, the, the how you do direct mail that's, that's unique and how you weave it uh, together with digital. So love for you just to tell everybody here um, at a high level, first of all, why do you do direct mail? Why is that still relevant today? And um, how are you weaving in digital and specifically what channels are, are you using for that? Uh, so, Direct mail still is relevant. It's very relevant. We continue to do it. Um, obviously, um, we've been fortunate where mail volumes are decreasing, but we are increasing uh, year after year um, volumes. Uh, it's still a targeted piece. You don't, you do not have a junk mailbox that your mail goes to. It still goes to your house. It still goes into your mailbox. People yep. have to get it, and people have to actually look at it and throw it away. So. Um, it, Direct mail is great. We love it. We love doing it. But, you know, it's not the, the, the single key piece that, that 
you need to use. You, you've got to, there is some marketing mix, right? So we combine direct mail with personalized URLs, ringless voicemail, uh, SMS, um, email, and we've actually built custom portals. And those are kind of some of the things that we do with you guys. Some of the custom programming, the out, not the, the, so to speak, out of the box solutions. Um, and, you know, depending on the customer and what they're looking for, we combine either any or all of these items with uh, the package. One of the things I love about you, Mike, and your company there is you're able to take very complex ideas, very complex uh, opti channel marketing workflows and reduce them down to very understandable sound bites. And one of the ones that I love that you, you folks use is bug them till they buy. Tell me what that means in your context. Basically, we go to our customers and we say, look, we are going to bug them till we buy. We are going to hit them every <laughs> way possible until we can get them to respond and become your customer. How many it's, of you like that? Bug them till they buy. Drop a, drop a one in the chat. <laughs> What's that, Mike? It's, it's, it, it's very simple. I mean, yeah. that's, that's basically any marketing. You're going to bug them till they buy. Yeah. You know, at some yes. point they'll say stop, but um, that's the other good thing about direct mail. We don't have an unsubscribe. Well, we have an unsubscribe, but not, not nearly as effective as, as email. That's for yeah. sure. So folks, if you resonate with that, like I see Michael over there in chat saying, I love it. Uh, give it, give us a one in the chat in zoom or in Facebook or in LinkedIn. If, uh, you're a believer there and bug them till they buy certainly as a service provider agency, uh, printer, if you're delivering value for your clients, you need to help them engage their audience where they live. That's the whole point of what we're talking about today, whether it's in print or in digital channels. Um, if you're a brand B2B, it looks like we have a lot of B2B organizations here. You got to be out there. You have a moral imperative to be selling your service and your product. All right. Fred's given me a bunch of ones. Hey, Fred, it's good to see you. Martin gave a one. Brett says, yes, I agree for sure. So um, I've had the pleasure of, of visiting your various locations uh, there in Texas over the years, Mike. And you know how I'm always, I'm always grabbing my cell phone, taking pictures of things, asking you if it's okay to take pictures. So I thought it'd be cool to really uh, quickly step through your facility by way of some photos um, and just give you a you know, five second opportunity to say anything that you want about any of the pictures. So here's the first one. Anything notable here that you want to point out? Yeah, the first thing I want to say is we've been in, a, we've been in, a, in our, our location for probably close to 16 years or 15 years. So over the last year, we've actually purchased a new building. And this is, uh, this is some of the remodeling. And this is actually an image of our, of our new building this year. Um, it's about less than a half a mile from our old building. So we'll be moving. Hopefully by the end of the year, we should be moved into the new building. Our production facility, which is right here, you see, will be moved into there. And our fulfillment will be moved up to our old building. Brett says it's really nice and clean looking. I know you've done a lot of work and take pride of ownership over uh, not well, only what you're producing for clients, but also what's on the inside, right? Well, Dave, I think you saw it before before we even took over it. <laughs> yeah, it was it was pretty bad. Yeah, and uh, we had a we had a recycling company in there, so there was recycled paper everywhere stacked to the ceiling, and then the other side was a foam manufacturing company. So it was it was definitely a manufacturing, and and we had to do a lot of work to to, to make it look presentable. All right. Anything you see, here you see? Yeah. Just, what do you see here? Yeah. Some of the equipment that we have, we've got, we have the ability to do black continuous uh, personalization. Um, we've got a number of those machines. Uh, we can do, you know, die cutting, uh, laminating, die cutting, things of that nature. Um, again, that's another picture of our twin uh, color stream that has the ability to do that. Just a standard cutter, uh, simple. Um, Here's the beauty. That is, that's the beauty. That's our KM1. Um, we are, as you could probably see, we're an extremely clean print room. Um, not just because it's new, but we've, we've kept it that way and we're keeping it that way. Um, but this is our, that was our new machine, the KM1. This is actually one of our screen ZZs. The next screen ZZ is actually going, if you see this picture just to the left, we're going to be setting a, a second with the second one that's at our other facility, uh, in that location, hopefully by the end of the year. Um, that right there is looking at our screen HD. Uh, that one actually uh, has inline UV coating and dynamic perfing. Again, a picture of the KM1. Cool. If you folks have questions about the equipment or any of the investments that uh, John and Mike have made, if you're in Zoom, if you're in LinkedIn, if you're in Facebook, let us know. Uh, we're going to answer all your questions today. If you just jumped into LinkedIn, if you just joined us there, make sure to drop a hello. LinkedIn doesn't do a good job in uh, letting us know that you're here, but we'd love to be able to say hi to you. Now, uh, Mike, this is one that you didn't want me to put in. I know I had to well, test I, I actually, 
I actually have it back here now. So, yeah, I do. It's right there. So, um, what the heck? We can all agree with the sentiment, right? Make direct mail great again. Who 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 can disagree with that? Yeah. Well, the the funny thing is, is when we when we used to have trade shows and go to trade shows, uh, they would see that and either they'd stop and get some questions, or they'd look at you, shake your head, and keep walking. So. Ruben uh, says he, he wants one of those. So maybe what we need to do is create a quick storefront, Mike, and start selling some of these. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, yeah, that's that's a good idea. We've had a lot of people want them. You know, it's it's a good play. I know it probably upsets some people, but it's not anything political. It's just no. something. It's something to get people for us. It was something to get people to stop, stop yep. and talk. And, yep. and actually, some of the people that weren't happy with it were some of the opportunities that actually turned out to be good opportunities. So, beautiful. Um, anything to do to set yourself out from everybody else, no matter where you are. Yeah. Just stop and chat. Yeah, key, I mean, that's a, that's a key point here, folks, for all of you who are listening, whether you're starting your business, if you've been in business for 30, 40, 50 years, you have to stand out. Right now, there's so much noise. Um, you have to be willing to be a little edgy because otherwise, nobody's going to pay attention. Um, so, yeah, I, I like that, Mike. Thank you. And maybe we'll start, have, uh, we'll, we'll start selling some of these to folks. Um, in a moment, I'm going to ask the key questions that our audience submitted, but... Um, I know that that one of the common things that came in was, hey, show us examples, show us things that you're doing, ex inspire us, give us some ideas. So um, you pulled together a few examples here, and I want you to just talk briefly about each of these. So what's this first one that we're looking at here? So obviously, we, we have the ability to do everything from postcards all the way through letter packages, self-mailers, snap packs, et cetera. But a lot of people can do that. And so I wanted to pull out a couple of things that were pretty cool that we're doing that I don't know that if anybody really else is. This looks pretty simple. It is a straight up postcard uh, talking about, you know, hey, order a pizza. The cool thing about this one here is it's missing the QR code, but where that QR code is, what it has the ability to do is you actually scan that, you actually scan that QR code. It actually hits a database. That database is doing demographic lookup of the people that are actually scanning that card. So based on the demographic information, it's going to come back and say, oh, I know it's a I know it's a family of four, so I'm going to give them a two pizza special and two and two two liters of Coke. Versus, oh, this is a this is a single family or not single family. This is a, a, a family with no children, presence of children. So you know what? I don't need four pizzas. I'm going to do, you know, a pizza, a salad, and a two liter. You know, so it has yep. the ability to do specific demographics. Yep, I see a lot of people still chatting about the hat, Matt, uh, Mike, and. Um... Over there in LinkedIn, Scott Egenhouse over at Tech Mailing is saying he wants uh, to send me his cloud suit. I know you know these guys, but they're cloud suits. So, Scott, send me a cloud suit. Mike, send me a make direct mail grade a hat. Uh, uh, in, for the next session, I'll wear it, all right? <laughs> I'll get you guys what you're you, looking for. You wear it. I got it. You wear it. All right. Sounds good. So so that's a cool example. Now, what, what's this one? So it's it's the similar similar pro, uh, premise. So what this actually does is this was this was a, a mock-up for Casino, where you actually had their backend database knowing their their people. You know they know excuse me they know those people and what their their habits are. So again, you scan that, and then based on when you scanned it, it's mm -hmm. going to come back. You, you you scan it, and it comes up to an app where they push the button and it spins. The wheel spins. And it comes back, you're a winner and an offer. So based on what the data shows in the client's database, you're going to get, you know, you're going to get a free night stay. You're going to get um, a bonus chips or you're, you're going to get a dinner for two. So again, it's again, personalizing the experience to the customer based on their buying habits. Got it. Got it. Really cool. I see folks uh, like my, my friend Fred over there in chat saying, I need to get uh, Fred, where'd that go? I need to get an info sheet on that pizza program. So if you're here in Zoom um, and you want to know more about the pizza program, just drop the word pizza there in the chat so it's easy for us to go back and follow up. Drop the word pizza. Uh, Chris is saying pizza. Betty says pizza. If you're in LinkedIn, drop the word pizza. Uh, Scott Egenhouse, I know you like pizza, so go ahead and drop the word pizza there uh, for me. And if you're in Facebook, uh, drop the word pizza, and we'll follow up with you on that. Oh, wow, casino's coming in too. Yeah, people want to know more about that, Mike. So thank you for sharing that. Um, some really cool examples. And um, – we got a lot of questions about how you find clients, especially during the pandemic. So before we get into what you're doing right now, I know that prior to all of this craziness, trade shows were a very fruitful route for you. So at least that's my understanding. Can you tell us more about where you would find your clients before all this craziness started and um, how did trade shows do for you and kind of how did you approach the trade show? 
Uh, you're exactly right. Trade shows were one of our best best lead generators. Actually, we've got really two real good lead generators. Trade shows are very good. We, we do very well at them. But then also your old clients. You know, we've mm. got a number of clients. And as you know, some of the some of the industries that we served, um, the financial services that you and I have been working with, they go from one to another to another to another. And you do a good enough job for you, they're going to bring them with you. So, I, you know, definitely, you know, definitely traditional cold calling, but definitely trade shows and, you know, your old clients. If they like what you do and you're good to them, they're going to come, they're going to, they're going to bring you with you, bring them with you wherever you go. So this is an example of what a backdrop at a, at a trade show that you would use. Yeah, exactly. And again, it's, it's, it's one of those that makes somebody stop and either shake their head and walk on cuss you, yep. whatever, but <laughs> majority of the people actually stop. They laugh, they like it. They take pictures with it, but yep. it gets them to stop again, stands just stands out above everybody else. Someone's going to look at it, come by, talk to you about it. And it, you just got to get them to stop. And yep. again, trade shows were the, one of the best things for us. Yep. Well, then I think that's a that's a natural segue into, well, what are you doing now during COVID? It's been hard for so many, um, you know, where we work with thousands of organizations, thousands of print uh, companies and and agencies and, and, and all sorts of different companies are having a hard time right now. So what are some of the ways that you've been able to keep your company out in front during this uh, crazy time? Well, uh, we, we did a Kickstarter business um, that was more local, so it wasn't a high volume piece, but, you know, not only not only do we want to generate high volume customers, you know, John and I and Ben and the team, you know, we want to help business, you know, we, mm -hmm. you know, we're all, we, we're still open. We've always been open. Uh, we're considered an essential business. So we never close down. So we are going into the office, you know, you can't have an insert operator work from home. So yes. we do have people working. And so we do have to get into the office, obviously be careful, but you know, things that we would notice is, okay, let's go to lunch everybody's closed, you know, and, yep. and, and, if, you know, it's going to be what 40%, I think I've heard 40% of the people aren't coming back. So John came up with an idea to say, Hey, you know what, let's do something to kickstart your business. And this was geared more towards our uh, web to print. But what we did was we did some advertising. We actually got interviewed. John got interviewed on channel 11 and we basically said, go online, fill out a form and register to win. Uh, a free mailing. And what we actually did was we set it up. Um, I, once a week, I would draw three people. I think you'll see it in another slide. Uh, but we picked a, a total of 18 winners. Uh, we mailed for all 18 of them. We still have, we still have some come back and repeat mailers. Uh, it was good for us. Uh, we think it helps some of the people because there's a lot of people out there hurting right now. Yep. And, you know, this isn't much, but, you know, it did help some people. Absolutely. So here's, Here's uh, an example of, I think, what was run on uh, on Channel 11, right? Yes, when correct. they did their spot on you. Yeah, so here's John That's talking correct. about it. We can send folks the, the URL if they're interested in seeing that, or you can Google that. And then uh, you mentioned you also did some radio uh, promotion. Is that what this is here? Yeah, we did some we did some local radio. So we, we actually generated a, 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 a private label site. We just called it dfwpostcards.com. So you could actually go there. You'd hear the radio station, hey, go to dfwpostcards.com. You could go in and simply pick your postcard, edit it, just like I said earlier, and you're off. Um, but we, we did get a lot of people coming in. We got a lot of response. It was it was a win-win. One, we helped the community. And two, we actually got some some pretty decent opportunities to, to do some print and mail uh, local. We had a pretty good exposure. I can't tell you the number of people that said, hey, we, you know, it was it was on a ticket, uh, which is a sports radio station. So I can't tell you how many people said, hey, I heard your advertising on the radio. We love it. It's great. Yeah, Marianne uh, from GPA just said it's really interesting to me to see a printer using broadcast to market. And uh, so, folks, that's why I invited Mike here. I mean, they're innovative, they're creative, um, they're willing to do things that are uh, not uh, common. But also, Mike, you kind of you kind of breezed over this, and I know because you're humble. Um, but this is really really key uh, in what I've seen from you, uh, from Ben, uh, from John, from your staff. This right here that you really wanted to help people. Yeah, we, we, we do. We, you know, it's, it's a, it's a terrible time right now. And at the end of the day, we're going to have a lot more issues, you know, going down the road in the next year or so. And with, you know, 30, 40% of the people not being able to go back to their business, if we can do anything to help those people that are on the fence to say, Hey, I just need a mailing to get people in the door. It's going to help everybody in the long run. Yep. Absolutely. 
All right, so let's get to the questions that the faithful have submitted uh, for you, Mike. And I know you were you were surprised that so many questions came in. I remember the first time I told you how many were coming in, you were you were a little surprised. Now you've gotten a little bit more used to it. But I got to say, you're one heck of a popular guy. Tons of questions well, came in. <laughs> we saw we saw the uh, we saw the mix of who all is on here. It's a lot of print service providers like myself, so I'm assuming they're asking a lot of questions similar with similar issues or questions or challenges. I would guess. Yeah, and, and you're in, and you're inspiring them. Um, so we had a bunch of questions from you all, from those of you who are in LinkedIn, Facebook, and Zoom here. And what we had to do is we kind of had to break them down into three buckets. Bucket one is, you know, Mike, how did how did you how did you all build? Summit. How did you build this company? So we got a bunch of your questions we picked that are in that bucket. For those of you who want to know kind of how the trajectory of the building of this company look like, we're going to get into that for a second. We're all we're talking about multiple channels. We're talking about Opti Channel. Let's go deeper into that. How do you actually do that? What software do you use? What process do you use? What's the timing? Does it really work? Um, that's the second bucket of thing we're going to look at. And then thirdly, everybody wants to know about sales. Um, and so what does your sales process look like? How do you do that? How do you comp your people? How do you motivate people? How do you actually make this happen where so many, so many others have failed? So those are the three areas we're going we're gonna to focus on. I'm going to start with the questions around how you built your organization. And as I mentioned uh, earlier, but if you missed it, if you just jumped into Zoom or into LinkedIn or Facebook, we're going to ask Mike, I'm going to ask Mike your top questions, but as they come in to you, um, new questions, or if you want to know more about something he said, please drop it in the chat, drop a comment, put it in the chat, text me. We can see all of that. And we're going to leave time at the end to get into your real time questions as they come up. So uh, two questions here. They're both kind of in the same vein around how you built a uh, summit. The first is from my friend, David E. Um, and, and then I'm going to bring up the second question, which is very similar. David is asking what organizational changes were required to start building your brand as an opti channel marketer beyond print and similarly from Mike, he said, I've seen a trend of print and letter shops like us adding digital marketing services. What do you do in-house and what do you use a partner like MindFire for? Okay, well, those are good questions. So the first, the first part is the organizational change is we're a print and mailer. Pretty much most people know print and mail. So we had to generate a champion and I, I guess I was the fortunate one to be the champion of digital. Mm -hmm. and, and basically, you know, I, I basically came in in order and in order to um, become an opti-channel marketer, you needed to have somebody at your shop to become a, a brand champion or a vertical or a channel champion, and that's what I ended up being. Um, so I had to, I guess it's been back in 2005, six. I had to start learning and understanding a lot of the stuff that us as printers and mailers don't understand. Um, and it's taken, you know, I'm still learning every day, but. You know, we've we've gone a long ways and we've we've adopted a lot of technology from from this from the start. Now, as, as far as, you know, what do we do in house and what do we use partners for? You know, we are a print and mailer. We are good at what we do, um, depending on what the what the technology is. There are some things we can do in house and there are some things that we partner with MindFire for, for example, some of the personalized URLs, marketing automation, et cetera. We originally started doing personalized URLs ourselves. We built we built it ourselves. The problem that, that we see is um, we were reinventing the wheel. I would get to here. By the time I got here, Dave and his team were here. So I got to here and he was here. So, you know, at some point you decide build versus buy. You just need to find a great partner. And we were fortunate and we are fortunate to have a number of the partners that we do. So I want to underscore something you said there, Mike, because again, you're, you're so humble. Um, but the fact that you're a champion um, of this technology and this initiative and this movement really is one of the distinguishing attributes that I see from my view here at MindFire when I look out across, you know, the thousands that we've worked with, the, the, the printers who haven't been able to make this, this transition, if you will, or this, this uh, leap into this investment. Um, that's something that does set you apart from the others is that you, your organization has clearly identified you as the champion or the cheerleader. I know you like when I call you cheerleader, right? Um, and so that's, that's something that, that sets you apart. And I don't think folks for, for all of you who are listening, don't miss that. If you're taking notes, write that down. If you're thinking about how to do this for yourself, that's a key part of it. I saw you smile there a second ago, Mike, did you want to add something there? Yeah, no, it's not many people in our industry at our size and level do some of this 
multi-channel stuff. They'll partner with other people as well, but not many have taken on the technology that we've taken on. And that's, I think, why we've been so successful. Um, we've now got to the point now where there's, you know, there's a gentleman with me here, Ben, as well. Ben and I are pretty much now the co-champions of it yeah. Um, because we drive, we drive a lot of digital through or opti channel, however you want to call it, marketing automation th through our shop. Yep. Yep. So, so we've done, um, we've done a lot of looking through the questions and, and a lot of the questions that were kind of centered around like what Mike R, not you, you're not asking yourself this question here, but another Mike R asked around, you know, did you build your solutions internally? You kind of just touched on that a second ago, or did you find the right vendor for a particular solution? A and B, how do you mesh them together? Uh, good question. Well, we've been fortunate to have you guys just for the simple fact that on the technology, you guys have the ability as an agnostic platform to be able to mesh SMS and bring it all in. So you've been very helpful with that. You know, again, we built our own platform init initially and we could just never get it to that next level. Or by the time we got it to the next level, we were spending hundreds of thousands of dollars to get it to that point when you guys have already got it there. You know, one thing I will say is, yes, we're a reseller of your product but we're really not reselling your product because nine, I, and you know this as well as I do, 90 plus percent of my clients, they're not using your out of the box product, yep. right? Yep. We are having, and that's, those are the, those are the discussions that we're having at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And, you know, sometimes not so nice discussions, yep. but those are the ones that have made us all successful. You know, you know, we start off using a personalized URL, but what we're finding is that just gets us in the door to do something. What we're actually good at is building solutions that fit the customer. You know, the customer has a hole somewhere that needs to be filled. You know, we'll, we'll actually work with your solution and build a custom proprietary solution that can actually fix. We've got a lot of proprietary solutions out there that we that we partnered with you on and built that are for, for specific companies that we could never use it for anything else just because it's so specific, right? Yep, yep. You know, we, you know, you know our goal is to help. You know, our goal is to help customers and, you know, whether it's just generating a pearl or generating pearl with marketing automation, tying it to a portal, you know, we will deal with a lot of, uh, uh, you know, softwares, other softwares that are serviced, you know, the Velocifies, the sales forces of the world, there are big holes. They've got holes that they don't do. And we've been fortunate enough to work with you guys to be able to build a solution Yep. It's, it's not just out of the box, okay, you get a pearl, you're going to get charged X a piece. Yep. It's, a, it's a total technology solution. So we, like I said, we've been very fortunate to be able to find somebody like you. You know, some of the other providers that we've looked at, they're not willing to go the extra mile like you guys are. Um, and we've been fortunate and we've been able to keep a lot of customers and be able to, to, to really have it become a, a major part of their marketing uh, along with the direct mail. As far as how they mesh together, if you do it properly, and again, I, I hate calling myself an expert, but since you've been, when you've been doing something since 2007, yep. and taking trial and error, trial and error from customers, you yep. end up by default an expert. And I think um, our team, myself, Ben, and some of the other guys on our team, we're experts at these types of solutions and, and merging the product in with a direct mail solution. So I heard you say three key things, and I'm taking notes just like I'm sure the audience is. Number one, uh, you, you you believe that partnering with the right partner um, is important to success. Two, I heard you almost say, and these are my words, not yours, but almost in some cases, you're using the personalized URL almost like a Trojan horse to get inside right. an organization and then ex not exploit, but I suppose find additional opportunities that you can service. And then thirdly, what I see you always doing is creating a solution, not selling a feature. Um, what I see, where I see so many organizations fail, especially those that are that are service providers trying to provide this service to their clients, is they're saying, "Hey, you need to add a pearl, right?" But what I see you doing is creating a full solution. You're creative. Your organization is creative in some way that maybe others are not. And you say we go the extra mile here at Mindfire. That's because you go an extra five miles, an extra 10 miles for your clients. So folks, if you're listening, I don't want you to miss those things. Those are some, some attributes that if you're thinking about how to do this yourself, do you have that in your leadership? Do you have that in a champion? Do you have that in your people? Do you have the elements that Mike's talking about here? And that's a good segue to, you know, one of the things that I see uh, that I saw a lot of here on the questions is 
what did it take from a, an ownership level, from a management team level to get on board with this stuff, with changing in this way? Um, and, and the question here from Jeff articulates that well. What did it take for top level management to get on board, buy in and move forward? Okay, I, I'll answer that one, but I want to I want to do a, a one quick comment to the other thing is why we're able to do one of the things I wanted to mention is, you know, because of our size, we started out pretty small, and and John used to say we're the jet ski where you could move around quickly, do things very quickly. Well, since we've grown, we're probably not the jet ski anymore. We're not the we're not the ship that takes five miles to turn, but we're still pretty agile. We're pretty athletic. Um, and being that way, we have the ability to implement and make changes quickly and, and, and implement a lot of programs quick and fast for clients who, you know what, hey, we are a, we're a Fortune 500 company, and in order to get something like this through that we've got to build, it's going to take eight months or a year to go through this, we can deliver on that solution. So anyway, that, I wanted to touch on that. Um, You're reminding me of like the presidential debate, Mike, where you have to go back and answer the last question. <laughs> I'm not, hey, I'm not interrupting you, am I? No, you're not, man. You're doing a great job. <laughs> okay. You want to put that hat on for you? Sure, I will. Um, so as far as top-level management, the, the great thing about the company I'm in, and I'm sure not everybody is so fortunate, is John is a great owner. Um, he allows us, he, he's on board from the beginning. He's one of the, he's one of our champions as well of, of being technology-driven, you know, at the end of the day, he wants to be doing things faster, quicker, faster, more efficient. Because um, one of our biggest challenges is employees. And I'm sure everybody in this call is, has the same issues finding the great employees. So by default, we didn't have a choice but to be um, a champion for new technology, new things, because we had to. We had to find things that would make us quicker, make us faster, make us more agile, make us respond better, just simply because. A lot of people thought there's not a lot of people out there to find right now. Yeah, We've been doing that since day one, but, um, you know, we're fortunate to have somebody that, that is already on board. And, you know, basically what we have to do is we just, we take it to the meetings and sit down and show, Hey, we tested this. It's all about testing. I saw McKenzie posted something about testing, but that's truly what it is. It's testing. You know, should we test pearls? Should we test SMS? Should we test email? Hey, there's a new product out there. Geofencing, for example, let's test right. that. If it works right. great. If it doesn't, we won't do it, but we, we have the buy-in to be able to test things. And that's, that's why we've been so fortunate. Yeah. I see uh, Scott over there in uh, LinkedIn saying culture makes all the difference. Right. Um, and, and that's true. And you've been blessed with, like you said, good ownership on, on, on John's part and, and your team being able to embrace us from the start. Hey, everyone, if you're getting value from this, drop a yes in LinkedIn, drop a yes in Facebook, drop a yes in chat, give Mike some kudos here. Um, if you're getting value from, from these responses, because this is, He's sharing from the heart, and uh, I want to make sure you're you're taking advantage of this. This is this next question here. I love. Um, I always ask asking myself this, asking my team this kind of question. Um, this came in from Guy, or is it Guy? Forgive me for uh, not knowing how to pronounce that correctly, but uh, he, uh, he says, "What are the top two or three adjustments you made on your journey that you wish you would have made sooner?" Uh, well, it would have been personalized URLs for sure. Um, and probably personalized URLs and variable digital print or variable digital print and personalized URLs. Um, it's been a game changer for us, both of them. Um, and so the, it's, it, as you guys have seen, it's a no brainer adding marketing automation or adding some type of digital omni channel to direct mail. Um, we wish we would have done it sooner. We've done it. We did it pretty soon. The other piece that we're starting to do now is what people call the customer journey. That's, I guess, a key word now that people are wanting to do. Um, OptiChannel is kind of a start to a customer journey. Uh, we probably should have started that. Um, we probably should have started that a little sooner. Uh, but again, you only can start what your clients will allow you to, right? Yep. So yep. we've pushed and we've pushed and we've pushed. Um, but, you know, that those would, I would say would probably be the the things I wish I would have done sooner. So getting into um, variable data printing earlier and getting into the digital channels earlier. <clears throat> yeah, that's correct. And then understanding, you know, under and this is still something we're learning ourselves, but understanding the customer journey, how to do the customer journey. I mean, omni-channel is part of the customer journey. Um, we're still we're still working on that champion, so to speak, for the customer journey. We we think we're going down the right path, but. I, I wish we would have started that sooner. Like I said, but again, 
a lot of our clients don't understand the customer yeah. journey, so it's kind of hard to explain to them. They need to get on it when they don't even understand it. Well, that's a good segue into the next bucket of questions here is around how you're really using all of those channels together, um, how you're touching folks, not only in direct mail, but also in digital channels like email, social, LinkedIn, SMS, ringless voicemail. You're doing quite a bit. So th the next set of questions here, everyone, are around um, that, that key bucket. And uh, there are two questions here that are very similar. Uh, the first from John L., asking what are the steps to run these campaigns? And then very similarly behind that is Sylvia T saying, um, you know, explain the timing between the channels and the touch points. How many channels does it take to be effective? Um, well, that's a good question. You know, if I knew the answer to those, truly knew the answers, I wouldn't be on this call. I'd be somewhere else uh, retired. <laughs> but, you know, honestly, it, it depends. It depends on the customer. Every customer is different. Um, we have customers that are in the exact same industry that might run a full color envelope and do extremely well where somebody else do does a windowed envelope with just a teaser copy or just a return address so it's it, it varies by customer again kind of going back to that customer journey depending on what the customer wants you know we always start with direct mail we always try to push a personalized url and then from there it's how many touch points do we need do we need one or two point touch points for um you know a to, to retarget, uh, do we need to add an email? Um, you know, does the customer want to hit an email with mail tracking? Does somebody want to hit an email based on the mail tracking before the mail piece comes in? Do they want to do it after? Um, there is no set timing or answer. I've got some clients who want to do emails 48 hours after. I've got some who want to do a week later. It all depends on getting to know your customer and understand the customer and the product and truly understand what they want to do and how they want to get to where they need to go. So oh, Chris Goff, I don't know if you're here. I hope it's okay that I use your last name. Um, Chris, I know you had a question you uh, sent me on LinkedIn earlier today about mail tracking and, and you had an opportunity fall on your lap, kind of like what Mike is describing here. So Chris, if you don't mind, drop that question back in the chat. I wanna make sure that I get that to you. Um, oh, Chris had to leave early. Okay, no worries. Chris, uh, Mike would be a good person if you wanna get an introduction to uh, Mike. Mike, I'm gonna sh share your contact info here in a minute if folks have uh, questions after the event um, like Chris is. So. This next one, believe it or not, came in fairly often, um, like what you see here from Alex uh, saying, look, really? Is direct mail still going strong? Is it worth going the extra mile to do a unique mailer? And this was kind of a nice summation of what multiple people said around direct mail. So set us straight here, Mike, what's, what's the truth? It is, and it's still one truly, it's probably asked by a lot of the younger generation, Actually, we're seeing a lot more of the younger generation looking at direct mail, but yes, it is still going strong. And it is definitely worth going the extra mile to do a very unique mailer. You know, the more you personalize, the more you personalize with color, the better the response is going to be. Um, we've, got, we've got platforms now that, that I can do variable digital printing on the, on the letter itself. Um, I can insert it into an envelope and when it's going through the insertion of an envelope, I've got four, four color ink jets on the outer side that can actually, hey, Dave, check this out. Mike, check this out. If you're going after a franchise or you're going after multiple companies, you can, you can drop down variability. Uh, mm -hmm. The more you personalize, uh, the more you personalize, the more you personalize in color, the better it's going to be. Um, and, and if, you know, we're still going strong, our, our volumes are going up you know, day by day. Is some of it because of default, because people are going away? Sure. Um, direct mail isn't growing, but I think it's getting a lot more personalized. Um, and I think the more you personalize, the better response you're going to be. And so that might, I mean, obviously mail is going down, but I think the more you personalize and, and the more you color personalize, the better target you're going to be and the better target you're going to be, the better response you're going to have. So we had a lot of questions around like the, the second layer of this is if it's actually still going strong, if it's still widely applicable, what kind of data do you have to share around that? And, and, and how do you approach your clients to make that case around the data? So we have some, we have some uh, studies and case studies that we can share. Uh, but traditionally, you know, many of our clients, mm -hmm. many of our clients don't share a lot of data with us, but you know, it's inferred. You know, if I've got a client doing a couple of million pieces a month and they've been doing it for year after year after year using these types of um, techniques, we know it works. You know, they're not going to continue to do it. And most of those companies have good analytics. They're just not necessarily sharing them with us. So what we typically do, and I'll probably say it 
multiple times throughout the rest of this thing is you've got to test, get them to test, you know, get them to test small quantities, something that's somewhat painless, even if it's a large company, let's pick a set, let's get a good data set and let's test it and let's let us prove to you what we'll do. We'll yeah. actually, we'll actually on our side, I'll actually throw in a personalized URL at no cost. Hey, come do the mail with me. You come do the mail with me. I'll add a personalized URL to it at no cost. And once it shows you it works, here's what your rollout costs are going to be. But I can at least, you know, you know, I'll at least throw in with you to prove to you that it works on my expense. Yep. Take a note, folks. If you're if you're wondering what the sales process is like for Mike and his team, uh, certainly they're going to keep some of it behind the curtain. But listen to what he just said. Um, Brad, I see you saying uh, CPMI, your company is seeing that there is digital fatigue. People want relevant offline messages. Direct mail has proven to be more credible and shows that a business is willing to invest in a personalized one-to-one -one relationship. And so- I absolutely uh, Mike, agree with that. Absolutely yeah, I, agree I'm with sure that. you agree. So there were a couple questions around the different channels that you use. And I thought this one was interesting from Eric P. Eric, if you're here, uh, say hello. Um, but if you were if you were to force rank the digital channels for most effective with direct mail, what are the top three? Um, I've got two for sure. You know, personalized URLs, and then probably email would be my top three or top two. And the third one would be some type of combination between whether it be a digital retargeting, you know, maybe a, you know, a social. We don't and. and Again, it depends on the customer, maybe some kind of a social post, you know, tying it to a Facebook targeted ad, something like that. My top two really are pearls and, e and email. And then whatever the client, whatever we can test with the client for that third one um, is when it kind of falls in third, whether, it's, you know, retargeting, email, you know, another direct, I know it's not another direct mail piece with a personalized URL, yep. uh, something along those lines. And I know when I talked to you earlier this week, when we were getting ready for the session, uh, you were saying, my goodness, we are just absolutely freaking swamped with election stuff right now, right? And so yeah. there are a couple, yeah, right? There were a couple questions that came in, uh, like what Craig says here, post-election, what are the one or two biggest positive trends in direct mail that you see? And I think uh, we saw other questions asking like, you know, what verticals do you think are going to be consuming mail and why are they going to be needing mail? So what are your thoughts on that? Part of it's going to go into the next, probably one of your other slides, but I, I would say more hyper-targeted, um, more hyper-targeted, more variable digital personalization. I think it's showing that, again, the more you personalize, the better the response is going to be. And I think after this election, people are going to start, you know, picking people and targeting them directly based on, you know, some of their attributes and their data. Um, what, what do you think the hot verticals are going to be if, if you had to look in your crystal ball? Um, some of them, are, some of them, I don't think might be positive, but you know, with with the election and what the economy is going to do, you know, plus or minus with the election as well as is COVID, um, you know, financial services, I think, and then maybe like I was saying earlier, some of these small businesses, small franchises, I think there's definitely some opportunities there for people like myself to go in and help these people. And if we can gather the the, the key to win in variable digital or into um, web to print is gather as many of them as you can and run them, run them all together. Nobody makes any money printing 50 postcards, 100 postcards, but you know, we've got some technology like many of you guys probably do to aggregate a lot of them and run them at the same time. I think going after some of these small regional type businesses where you can aggregate a lot of volume. Um, the other thing is, um, this is kind of the negative side, but positive for direct mail. I think we're probably gonna see a lot of uh, collection type services coming in. Yep. You know, a lot of people with, that, you know, I, I've seen some stories about people that are getting into houses. We do a ton of, uh, of mortgage. So we see a lot of refinance. There's a ton of people refinancing. So depending on what happens with COVID and people's jobs and people are not going to have jobs, I think there's going to be a lot more collection stuff out there. Um, and, you know, people, uh, other marketing things like looking for distressed properties, things of that nature. Um, I hate to say that, but yeah, I think that's, I think that's going to be a, possibly an up and coming, uh, more prevalent vertical uh, coming in here after the election slash COVID. Yeah, I understand the thought process, makes sense. Um, a lot of questions came in around uh, what we call touch points. So between the direct mail and the personalized microsite, there's a touch point that's the personalized URL. It's the response <laughs> mechanism, if you will. Um, but now we're seeing more QR codes, certainly here at MindFire, uh, we see more and I'll, 
I'll talk more about that here in a second. But the question for you from Sean, uh, Sean, I don't know if you're here, but if you are welcome, uh, he says QR codes seem more prevalent, uh, perhaps because of COVID, I think is what he means there. And is there a greater client understanding of their capability, uh, like in personalized, the use of personalized QR codes? What are your thoughts on that? Uh, well, as you know, we tested them. We, we have some customers using them currently, but we tested them, um, I don't know how long it's been, six, seven, eight years ago. They, they were terrible, absolutely yep. terrible. Didn't work. Our customers couldn't get them to work. But I'm telling you, with very slow adoption, but with everything that's happening with COVID, um, I, I truly think that, you know, every restaurant, you know, checking in for places, everybody is using QR codes. I think it's going to bring it back to the to the top of the page again. Yeah. I think there's going to be some more adoption to this stuff. The cool thing about it is I think you're going to probably kick it to the next page. Is, yeah. You know, John, for example, I try to show him how to do a QR code. He'd pull his phone up and try to take a picture of it. People didn't know how to use it. People were trying, didn't know how to download apps. Now it's as simple as picking up your phone, yeah, let's turning it on, and scanning yeah. it. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it is extremely simple. I mean, anybody, yeah. I say anybody can do it, but it's it's pretty simple now where the technology is there for it to do. And, and we are going to start pushing it and testing it again with our clients. So when we when we first started uh, kind of revisiting the topic of QR codes right around the start of the pandemic, there were still a lot of people who didn't know that what you just said is true. So now it's it's been a couple of months, and I'm really curious to know um, how many of you, especially those of you who are here in the print space, know uh, what Mike is talking about. So let me just let me just touch on that again real quick. So QR codes, they used to, as Mike mentioned years back, rely on <laughs> really crappy third party apps. Now. They're built into your camera. And what I want you to actually do, go grab your cell phone. Go grab your cell phone. Because what you can do, I'm going to do a quick demo here for you. You can jump to a URL to a Pearl very easily just by pointing your camera at the QR code. I expect that more of you know this, but it's a much more frictionless way now to go from print, like direct mail or signs, or like I saw Leon talk about um, restaurants and, and ordering, it's a much easier way to, to grab a, a person and, and, and digitally engage with them. So grab your cell phone right now, go to your camera and point it at this QR code. And if your phone is modern enough, it's going to prompt you at the top to open a web browser. Okay, go do it right now. And it will load to a page where you can click to connect with me on LinkedIn. That's the little example I'm giving you here. Click on my name and it's gonna prompt you to open LinkedIn. When you open LinkedIn, please connect with me if we're not already connected, okay? I'm gonna give you just a moment to start doing that. And after you're, as you're doing that, what I wanna know is, was this new to you? Was, is this the fact that it's built into your camera a new thing to you? If it is, drop the word new in the Zoom chat or in Facebook or in LinkedIn. I wanna know if it's new. Yeah, Jeffrey's saying it's funny. Go grab your cell phone. Like we don't all have it in our in our uh, arms right now. Yeah, and I know, I know that's that's funny. So Thomas is saying it's no, it's not new. Uh, Jeff is saying new to me. Keep those. Let me know if it was new to you, please, because we're, this is an interesting measure, especially for those of you for whom, I guess, regardless of whether this is new or not, the fact that Mike uh, mentions that they want to retest this, I think, should be an indicator to you of something you might want to be thinking about. Michael is saying very old. Okay, good. <laughs> All right. So it looks like knowledge has uh, the knowledge of this has become um, much more prevalent. Ruben is saying the same people for whom it's new also just discovered the fax machine. <laughs> All right, Ruben. <laughs> I'm telling you, I you know here in Texas we're pretty open. Yeah. Um, as far as being locked down, we're fairly open, and I'm telling you, we go to restaurants all the time, and I can't tell you the number of times people they end up having to end up hand, hand them a paper menu just simply because yep. they can't figure it out. Yeah, so, I understood. You know, understood. So there is, there is a good percentage of the people out there that are still trying to figure it out. Don't fully understand it. Um, you know, obviously most people that are on this phone, on, on this call are fairly, I would think would be technology, somewhat yes. technological savvy. So they're going to get that. Um, there's a lot of people I'm telling you, in Texas, I, agree. I say we're wide open. We're pretty open. And there's a lot yeah. of people that are just like, either they don't want to deal with it. Screw it. Just give me a piece of paper or yeah. they try to fiddle around with it and people don't have the patience. So yeah. I definitely think there's an opportunity still, and we definitely are going to test it to see if we can get some, uh, to some response with it and adding it with a, a, the personalized URL within the code. So you thought you just said personalized URL. Good segue here. <clears throat> 
from Joe. What do you say to folks that vehemently state that pearls don't work in today's marketing world? What the heck do you say to those people? First of all, gee, I wonder which Joe this is. We all know which Joe this is. Um, but honestly, I've done hundreds of millions of personalized URLs and they work. If you're not, if, if you're doing it and you tell me they don't work, it's probably because they're not being done properly. Again, I hate saying I'm an expert, but somebody like me who could probably get it to work properly. Um, I've really only had one that really hasn't worked very well. And that was with a senior, senior market doing end of life uh, planning. So we were targeting 80 plus year old people doing, and obviously direct mail worked well for them, but the QR or the QR, the, the Pearl did not work that well for them. But if they're not, if they're saying it's not working, I think they're missing the boat and they're probably not testing it or doing it properly. And they need either somebody like myself or somebody somebody on your team that can, can, can help them do with a test. And do you have any best practices as Gerard is asking here around how to get somebody from a Pearl to take the action that your customer, the end customer desires that gets your client to actually acknowledge that as a response or as a attributed attribution for that response? So I actually still have that issue. So depending on how someone sets up a personalized URL, it's going to take them to the site, depending on how they do it. Like your platform has the ability to just define whether or not it's coming from an SMS or it's coming from an email. A lot of companies have third party email platforms, you know, you know, MailChimp or somebody like that. So they're going to be generating a pearl, but using your system. And if they don't do it correctly and, yep. and, and do types of codes and things of that nature to attribute that specific number or that specific user to that, they're going to have a problem. We typically use a lot of reservation IDs, things of that nature. So if I'm going to market two or three different ways with a, a personalized URL, I'm going to have the mail piece is going to have a reservation ID. The email piece, if it doesn't have a reservation ID, it's going to have one in the back end that can associate it when it pushes across to the landing page, et cetera. And they can't deny, at that point, they won't be able to deny the attribution because it's going to show in the reporting. This person came in, this is the reservation ID, this reservation ID was tied directly to the direct mail piece or the email piece, et cetera. And that one's fairly simple. So, Mike, we're about 10 minutes behind where I wanted us to be, so I'm going to start picking up the pace a little bit, but you are giving so much knowledge away. I really appreciate that, folks. Do you want me to continue, or should we call it a day? Drop me a yes in Zoom or in LinkedIn or in Facebook. Drop me a yes if you want to continue. We're about to get into what's your sales process, Mike, but if you don't care about this, folks, we'll stop. <laughs> of course, I'm kidding. We're going to keep going. I know I'm nuts, Fred. My wife thinks that, too. We're going to keep going here, folks, into the next set of questions. Uh, Mike, a lot of people here, I think we, we, we saw from the data um, in, in the poll, maybe 70% are service providers, so agencies, uh, other printers, other folks um, that, are, that are looking up to you and aspiring to be like your organization in some way, and they want to know what your sales process is like. And so uh, first two questions here, uh, very similar. The first from Stuart is saying, hey, uh, swamped with online-only marketing, what case studies do you use to demonstrate in your sales process the ROI for what you're describing here. And similar, Phil K. Phil, are you here? I know you're here, I think. How do you get customers to understand the value of direct mail if they're committed to digital advertising? So how do you do this in your sales process? So the, the first question, you know, case studies, we do have some case studies. Um, some of them, you know, we've had to genericize them as much as possible, but we do have some case studies that we could actually show and say, this is, this is a direct mail piece. This is direct mail with personalized URL. Here are the responders, et cetera, and show the response rates versus both ways. So that one's fairly easy. And again, I can't reiterate it enough. It's testing, right? Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to be able to go in there and test, 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 test. You know, I'll do things like, again, like I said before, you go, you guys pay for the direct mail. You want to test digital? You guys are doing direct mail? Let's test digital. How about I pay for the personalized URL? You want to do... 10,000 pieces or 20,000 pieces. Great. Let's do 20,000 pieces. Let's do 10,000 with a pearl, 10,000 without a pearl on a direct mail piece. Let's see how it goes. I'll pay for the 20,000. I'll absorb the 20,000 pearl cost. Things of that nature, because at the end of the day, I'll get my money back. They'll get their money back and everybody will be happy. It's just part of it is going to be the trust, yep. the trust factor of trust on the sales side, trusting me 
you know, trusting me that I know what I'm doing, I know what I'm talking about. And part of that trust is seeing some of the stuff that we've done in the past. Would you agree, tell me if this is true or false, that most of the organizations you work with or that you want to work with have a small budget <clears throat> allocated for testing, some amount of money that they could allocate to testing? I, I would think so, yes. I would think most of them do. Okay. All right. This question, um, as you see here from Patrick, uh, came in a number of times for you, Mike. Are you talking with the same print buyer or are there different buyers or people in the mix? Has the customer buying mix changed? This is a tough one because it has. You know, my goal is I don't want to talk to the print buyer. If I'm talking to the print buyer, I probably lost. Okay. Because all the, all the print buyer cares about traditionally is getting the lowest price, right? So I'm not going to be able to say, you know, yeah, you might pay, you might pay 5% more with me or 10% more with me, but I'm going to give you personalized URLs. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to do this for you. But at the end of the day, oh, ABC is not doing that. You know, ABC is charging 10% cheaper. You know, if it's just a straight cost play, you're, you're talking to the wrong person. Um, so the goal for us is to talk to the CMO, talk to the director of marketing, the person who actually has a stake in it, to be able to show them the ROI um, and, 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 you know, find the person that's, that's the direct mail, director of direct mail, that, that his bonus is tied to the success of the campaign. Then they're going to see, hey, you know what, with me, it costs an extra, you know, three bucks a thousand or whatever the number is, but we're going to deliver you this, 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 and this, and it's going to work significantly better, which then goes back to, again, testing. Hey, you know what, I am 10% I am higher, but you know what, let me test it, but I might be 10% higher on the front end. But, you know, at the end of the day, the ROI is better. You know, traditionally, we're competitive. Mm -hmm. We are competitive, but, you know, there's always somebody that's going to be cheaper. Always yep. somebody who's going to give it away, especially, especially in this market right now when, when, when companies are struggling to survive. They're going to run jobs for, you know, they're going to run jobs for, for cost, you know, just to keep to stay in business. Yeah. So, you know, the goal is some of those, you're going to get what you pay for. You know, you're going to get something for cheaper than you think you get it. Great. You know, you might get lucky and it might go out on time. You might not be so lucky. And you know what? Your, your mail is going to be sitting somewhere or your mail, some of your mail not even been mailed. You and I both know some cases where mail, oh, yeah. I've seen mail sitting on, on docks before, yep. the supposedly have mailed. So yep. um, you got to talk to the right person. You got to yep. talk to the right person and get the buy in. Yeah, I see Michael over there in Zoom saying, Amen to avoiding print buyers. I only call on the marketing team. Absolutely. And, and sometimes you don't have a choice. Sometimes yes. you don't have a choice. True. Uh, this next question from Brian B. Brian um, always asks insightful questions. Brian, I think you're you're here. Uh, let me do a quick look. Yep, there I see you. Um, how are you beating out agencies that already have credibility helping clients with these integrated campaigns? How do you do that? So some of it's a challenge because we call on agencies as well, right? So they're not production facilities like we are, so we call on them. So if it's somebody that they already have an agency and and we're going after those, you know, what I'm going to do is like, I, like I, I keep preaching is I'm going to test. They should have a budget. You know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm with this agency and I'm, you know, I've signed a contract with them. I'm, I'm with them for the next year. Call me back in a year. Okay, well, nine times out of 10, they typically have ad hoc budgets to do one offs and ad hocs. I'll go in and say, give me a, you know, give me a chance with this. Do an ad hoc, something along those lines. Um, and again, most of these agencies are agencies. They're not production facilities. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and they're going to design pieces, you know, that's the other thing where we might have value. Um, I know agencies, there's probably some agencies on here and, and, and they do great jobs, but you know, sometimes the agency needs to work with us to say, Hey, you know what, that's a great piece, but if you could tweak it like this, like this, like this, we could knock 10% off the cost because, you know, you've got a, a quarter inch bleed, which makes me go to a neck, neck size sheet, things like that. So yep. I, I think, Again, it's difficult. If, if I had the answer, I'd have, you know, I wouldn't be here. But for us, you know, it's it's being able to just get in any way you can and test them and maybe even go on, go on to the people and say, hey, let me work with that agency. You know, let me test with your agency. You know, anything you can do. Um, do, do you have uh, any insight here into Ray's question around um, how, because uh, I know you can, but how are you able to attract customers who previously didn't use direct mail. Let's say that this is their first exposure to direct mail, or maybe they haven't used direct mail in a long time. How do you actually do this? 
again, I know I keep I keep beating the same the same dead horse, but it's it's letting the ability to test. I have one right now. That's a it's a finance personal finance company, uh -huh. and they tested it and it did not do well. Um, and again, some of this is not me because, as most of you guys probably know, it's someone's people's opinion. But anywhere between seventy five and eighty five percent of whether or not someone's going to take you up on the offer is the data, right? So you've got to find the right data. If you're going to do it one time. And, and, and if you're going to do it one time and quit, don't waste my time, don't waste your time and money. So that's what we need to do. Again, we just need to get them into test. I'll, I'll give them something free. I'll absorb some costs. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, give them, I'll give them rollout pricing on testing quantities if I know that there's an opportunity down the road. Right. Ray, I think you're here. Um, your last name starts with an I. I think you're here. Uh, thank you for that question. Um, Nancy asked, this was early on as we were getting ready for the session and actually exchanged emails with Nancy uh, how do you develop rules of engagement when different departments, different parts of your sales team are going after the same customer? Um, that's, I, I say it's easy, but we're fortunate. I've got, what, seven or eight different, we've got seven or eight different sales guys here. We've all been around, we've all been around each other for a long time. We're a very long tenured group. Um, I know that there's a ton of companies out there, 50, 60, 80, 100 sales reps. Yeah. I don't know what to say to that, but what we typically do is we just say, okay, who are you calling on? If, if both of them have active conversations, it's a simple solution. Guys are splitting it. You don't like it, you know, tough, um, but you're splitting it. And at the end of the day, something is better than nothing. And keep in mind, you're going to get your part of the business and you're going to get that other part of the business. So, you know, splitting it should be fine. Now, if, if, if I'm calling on Dave and I've called on him for six months, six, nothing, nothing, nothing. And, and Ben, for example, comes in and, and he says, Hey man, I've got an active conversation with him. Well, then there's probably real, no, that's not really a decision. It's probably going to go to Ben because he's been talking with him and I'm just, just been calling on him. So it just, it really just depends, um, on your team. Um, I, and I know there's fights. I know there's tons of fights. I know people fight. I'm, I'm dealing with a customer right now who we're working with a vendor and there's two sales guys and one guy's going to get left out. I don't yeah. know what they're going to do. I don't know what they're going to do on their side, but with us, we try to do it. Um, we try to do it as fair as possible. So I see Michael's asking a great question. Michael, hang tight. We're going to answer this more in a minute here for you and give you some ways to help. But Michael's question, which I want to read for everyone is the biggest problem these days for a salesperson is actually getting a hold of a new prospect or a buyer. No one freaking answers their phones, emails, or LinkedIn. Is any channel working better these days? Any suggestions on getting their attention? Yes, uh, Michael, we do have some suggestions. Hang tight. Um, I've been in print sales for 35 years and I'm trying every trick I know on the book. It's very frustrating. Michael, I feel you, man. I'm sorry, um, but we do actually have some insight. Hang tight, we'll get there in a second. Um, this question here from Phil, uh, it, it is about how you've gotten the rest of your sales team to be able to adapt this model. Phil says, how have you trained your sales staff to adapt to this capacity that you offer your customers? How would you answer that? Uh, it's, it, I say it's pretty simple because at the end of the day, you show them a, you show them a check with this technology and you show them a check of just doing direct mail. They're going to get it and they're going to see that's all for a sales guy. It's all about how much money they're making and what they can do and how they can, how they can bring in more sales. If you, if you can show them the value of adding this technology and the amount of additional revenue that it can bring, they're they're gonna they're gonna step up and, and and learn and learn from myself and Ben and some of the other people on the team how we do what we do. Yep. And I, and it segues segues nicely into George's question here: What's working best to find new clients for your print, digital, mail, SMS offering? How are you actually kind of like what Michael said to a degree, but how are you finding customers with no trade shows right now? Man, it's tough. It's very tough. So there are, and, and, and this is my personal opinion, I'm not a big fan of the virtual trade show. You know, as you probably know, and you know, and you know our team, John and Ben, we love getting in front of people. We love face-to-face -face yeah. with them, talking to them. There's nothing better than sitting down in front of a customer. A virtual show, I think there's too much distraction. Um, I, and, and there is cost to do a virtual show. I just personally think that it's not worth the cost. Um, so we got to find new ways. I mean, you know, as a sales guy, you try every trick in the book. I mean, we've done everything from, you know, looking in your own mailbox to, you know, calling them, finding them on LinkedIn, just what everybody else does. You know, yeah. everybody's got their own tricks. Ben's I'm sure Ben out of my side, he's got his own tricks that, that, that he uses. 
um, it's it's a difficult, it's a challenge right now, especially when these people are working from home. Typically, you know, they're going to be, they should be followed from their office to, you know, from their office to, to their home office or to their cell phone. But it's, it is difficult. You know, I wish I had a, a more definitive answer on how to do this. Um, you know, I guess, I guess, um, you know, we've just been fortunate that we, we are finding good new ways to do things. And again, you know, don't forget about your old customers, you know, they're going yes, somewhere, sure. you know, and so, you know, that's a, that's another, um, that's another play, but yeah, we use this, you know, we just, we're sending out a mailing. I think we're sending out a mailing this week. It's, it's printed, it's printed and it's got a personalized URL and um, depending on what kind of engagement we might be popping off an SMS. How many, how many folks resonate with like Michael's question around how difficult it is to uh, reach people? Drop a yes in Zoom chat if that's tough for you right now or over there in Facebook, over there on LinkedIn or text me. Say yes if that's a tough challenge. We've got, we've got some help here in a moment, some resources that we want to make available to you. Um, but before I do that, I'm about uh, 10 minutes behind where I want it to be. One more question before we go to your real-time questions, folks. Don't drop off yet. I want to answer every question you have in your mind. But Mike, one thing that I've been wondering is, uh, for everybody here on the line, they might be thinking the same. Where are your revenues? And I hope this is okay for you to, to share here. Where are your revenues compared to where they were last year? Um, we've actually been very fortunate. I would say compared to last year, we are probably five or so percent higher than we were last year. Beautiful. So what a blessing. We've been, I, well, I think, you know, we, we, again, we've been very fortunate. Um, we've, we've never, we haven't lost any customers, but they pulled back. We mm -hmm. picked up new customers. Um, we've just been um, we've we've just been extremely blessed, blessed. And, yep. uh, and to be to be successful as we have. Like I said, the, the you know part of the challenge is not necessarily you know are your sales up? Your sales are up because you're getting more volume. But the other piece is we've been fortunate enough living in Texas, and Texas is is pretty has a lot of of the uh, of of cases of the of COVID. You know we're trying to do the best thing we can to keep our people safe as well, because you could have all the business in the world, but if your people aren't safe and they're not doing things they shouldn't be doing, we don't have the employees because we all know currently with COVID or not COVID employment and hiring in this industry is a, definitely a challenge. I want to get to everyone's real time questions. Paul, I see you have to drop off. No problem. We'll get you recording. We'll follow up with you and also give you the link to what I'm talking about in terms of the training to help you get customers um, but please stay, stay patient, everyone. I see a ton of questions came in from Mackenzie uh, that she's, she's collated over here on the right for me. Please keep those coming in. I'll be, but before I get to your questions, I want to make you aware of some of the free resources that we've pulled together for you, both from, from Mike's end as well as from, from us here on the MindFire side. There's four specific things uh, that we want to give to you regardless of, of your industry. There's going to be something here for you. Uh, Paul, if you haven't dropped off yet, this was what I was um, mentioning just a second ago. I, I mentioned this at the start. And uh, Michael and Paul and others have echoed this. Uh, you know, it's really hard to get clients and, and prospects right now to engage with us. The rules have changed. And uh, because of that, there's a, a new practice, a new methodology called social selling. You may have seen us talk a little bit about that in the recent past. And next week, we're going to teach you the process. So in next week's class, because this has been a prevalent question over the last two weeks as we've been doing these sessions, people keep asking the same question. We're going to do a training on it. It's for you, regardless of whether you're in B2B, B2C, um, whatever it is that you sell, uh, the, the, the session next week is going to cover that. And so if you want to attend that session, if you want to understand, um, for example, 92% of buyers will engage with you or your sales team if you do this very specific social action. Do you know what it is? If you don't, that's the kind of thing that we want to cover in the training. Um, a lot of people, once they learn this, are able to um, outperform themselves, what they were doing last year, last quarter, or other people in their organization, once they learn these social selling strategies. And I can also show you in that training how to take advantage of, for lack of a better word, free advertising that uh, a social network that you're probably not considering is giving away right now. And uh, if, if you learn how to do these things, um, it will set you apart from your, your competitors. Is this helpful to anybody? If so, drop the word live training in the chat. Try, see this word right here, live training. Uh, we, we plan to do it next week. Same time-ish, 90 minutes. We're going to limit it to 200 people because there's so, much, so many questions that come in. 
Is it useful to anyone over there in Facebook, over there in LinkedIn, drop in live training. We'll get you that link. Um, we'll get you that link shortly. And hand in hand with that, another resource that we want to give, this is specifically to my friends here who are in the print community. If, if you're a printer, if your agency, you're working with companies that consume print, it's very helpful to know who's actually buying print and print products. That's why we publish reports like the ones you see here on the screen. Do you have any of these reports, folks? If you don't, maybe you've seen them. If you don't, we're going to give you a link to that as well. Um, but as you know, what used to work to engage print buyers, uh, companies that need print, organizations that are print hungry, what used to work to engage them just doesn't work as well anymore, right? If it works at all. You know, we can't do trade shows, most of us. The issue is you need new skills. And so in addition to the training, which I had here on the screen, you need to know which companies to go after. When you have those two things hand in hand, if you're thinking about recovering revenue, not only do you need the training, but you also need to know which companies are expected to buy print. What kind of print products, print services do they need? So if this is helpful to you, we can send you the link to these as well. There's free reports. Uh, we rank like the top 20, 25 companies that need print in a, in a variety of different geographic regions. We have um, paid reports that you can buy as well that have hundreds and hundreds of companies listed. Um, but for now, uh, McKinsey, go ahead and drop the link to, that, to those reports. Folks, you can go download those at your leisure, uh, take a look at them, and then use that in conjunction with the training that we're doing next week, okay? It's for anybody who's struggling with reaching customers and prospects, and you know that what's, what used to work just doesn't work anymore. What you're missing is this social selling strategy, and that's going to be the focus of next week's class. Now, next up on the screen, the next resource I have for you is Mike's Direct Dial. And I'm gonna, we're gonna send that out through email so you'll all have access to him. There's his email as well, jot that down. We'll also send it out uh, to all of you in email so you can follow up with Mike. He's been very gracious to extend that to, to all of us. Thirdly, if you'd like to know more about what Mike has shared today, for example, let's say you wanna engage your market with direct mail, with innovative campaigns like what Mike uh, does for his clients, or if you're curious um, as to whether as a service provider, like a printer, maybe you're an agency marketing services company, if you're curious as to what it looks like to offer these types of services to your clients, just like Mike, then here's how we can help you with that. I've asked my team um, in the next week to set aside some time blocks. We put them on the calendar so that we can speak one-on-one -on -one with you personally about how you can use direct mail with these digital channels. So that depending on whether you're a brand, uh, a business that wants to create more leads, or if you're a service provider and you want to sell this as a service, we can help you understand the ins and outs. Um, there's a lot of different companies here, you know, big, small, uh, medium, large. So because we want to make sure that this is something that you could actually do effectively, we want to set aside a, a block of time to be able to talk to you. Of course, no obligation. We're not charging you anything for this. We just want to help. Okay. Like Mike said, we're here to help. So if you want to talk to us, if you want to schedule a time to do that, McKenzie's going to drop this link in the chat. You can go sign up. We only have, um, we've, we've allocated four people to help discuss this with you. So spaces are limited on the calendar. When you go there, you'll see what's open. Mac, if you don't mind, please drop the link in Zoom and Facebook and um, LinkedIn. Uh, and folks, go to that URL, grab one of these spots. We booked them first come, first serve. And again, let me just clarify who this is for. This is for you if you're an organization and you want to engage your customers and your prospects using direct mail and digital the way Mike has described, okay? We'll talk to you. We'll see if Mike, um, if this is something that's good for Mike and his organization to help you with. And if so, we'll carry on that conversation to help get you where you need to be. Mike keeps saying he's not an expert or doesn't like calling himself an expert. Folks, he is an expert, all right? And so that's what we'll do in number one is we'll help understand help you understand, is this something that would be beneficial to your business? Second, if you're a printer or you're an agency that wants to be like Mike, how many of you want to be like Mike? <laughs> and you want to sell and service customers with OptiChannel and direct mail, then this is also for you, all right? And in the session, um, again, we're going to talk to you about exactly what your goals are, try to figure out, um, do you have clarity around what you're trying to achieve in either one of those camps? and then give you some specific steps that you can use to achieve those goals um, with direct mail and with OptiChannel. Now, usually there's at least two or three different ways that companies can go about um, addressing their challenges with what we've described here, depending on their size and their scope. So, um, you know, it's not a one size fits all solution. As Mike said, a lot of his solutions are custom, 
Um, but we'll talk through kind of how direct mail and OptiChannel can be adopted to your business so that you can get the best results in the shortest possible amount of time. You heard Mike say like, you know, you can go this on your own or you can find a partner and significantly save time and expense. That's what we want to help you do. Does that make sense, everyone? So if you want to have that conversation, if you're ready, I give you permission to turn me down. Uh, Mackenzie has dropped that URL in uh, the chat. You can go grab it. I um, mean, any one of the places, go sign up. And you have two, two choices with everything that you've learned from Mike today. You can either say, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to take any action on this. This can't help me, can't help my business. And I don't want to speak to any of the experts to see if this is something that would be useful to me. Or take a moment. I know you're serious because you're still here. You've been here uh, almost an hour and a half with us. I know you're serious about your situation. And simply say, Dave, Mike, I'm not sure if this is going to work for my organization, but I want to find out. I want to see. Go over there. Sign up, whether you're a printer, you're an agency, or you're a brand looking to engage your customers. If for some reason you don't think that this would work for you, all of the things that Mike has described, because maybe you've tried direct mail before and it hasn't worked, or you've tried pearls and, and digital and nothing happened, or maybe you've tried selling this to your customer if you're a, a printer or an agency and, and you failed, or maybe you think it doesn't work because you're too small or because you're too big, it's okay. That's why we offer a variety of solutions. That's why Mike, as he mentioned, customizes these solutions for his customer. Not every solution is for everyone. So we have multiple ways we can help, multiple solutions. And here's the link again, one more time. McKenzie's gonna drop that in the chat, I'm sure. If you're ready, head over there, grab a spot. Um, we do limit the number of people that we can talk to. Um, and and I, again, before I get to your questions, I just wanna reinforce one more time why this is so important, why you should consider talking to us further about this. This is Jacqueline. I'm connected with her on um, LinkedIn. She's the, she was the CMO over at USPS. She's, she's had a promotion recently, um, but she just published some, some data around the distinct and very powerful advantages that what Mike is describing here can do for you compared to single channel, you know, just one channel marketing. Real quick, your customers, if you're servicing brands or if you're a brand yourself, experience a 287% higher purchase weight rate when using three or more channels. Brands see a 48% higher conversion rate when evolving text messaging. Average ROI on SMS is over 2,000%. Purchase frequency is 250% higher when you're using multiple channels. The average order value is 13% more per order when using multiple channels and you retain customers 90% higher. When you do these things, when you make it easy for your customers, your prospects to engage in the optimal channel for them, because it's simpler, it's where they hang out, what happens? Customer, consumers say 64% of consumers are willing to pay more for a simplified user experience. That's why this is so powerful, folks. That's why we don't want you to miss this. If you're a service provider here, if you're a printer, if you're an agency, if we've worked together in the past, or if this is your first time with MindFire, I want you to think about this. You, you, you heard how Mike said, um, look, we wanted to help businesses, local businesses in our area. If that resonates with you, if you want to help others, think about how many companies are struggling right now because you're not offering them this kind of solution to help them revitalize their business. This is something that people need. Think about that for a moment. And if you're wondering, geez, I can't, I can't do what Mike and what Summit and John and Ben have done. There's something different about them than me. I'll tell you what the difference is. He said yes to figuring this out. Not giving up the first time you had a problem. Mike, how many problems have you had? More than you can shake a stick at, for sure. With you Mindfire said, or with, <laughs> with, with Mindfire or as a whole? All, all of them, thousands, <laughs> maybe hundreds yes. of thousands of problems. Yeah. He said, yes, he didn't give up the first time he had a problem and he worked with a partner along the way and you can do the same thing. So if you want to talk further, that's the end of my outreach to you. I'm trying to get you to move off the starting block and get you some help here. There's your link, um, sign up for a conversation. Let's turn over to your questions. As we do that, I want to give you one other um, resource here. And I know some of you are going to um, probably want to do this right away. There's a little link down here. McKinsey, if you don't mind, I'm sure you're swamped with chat right now. But if you don't mind, take this link right here, marketingsmissinglink.com. You can go to that, folks, if you want. Open up another browser window, marketingsmissinglink.com. 
it's a little demo site that will allow you to experience what it's like to engage as a consumer with multiple channels. Okay, so when you go there, you're gonna see a little form to fill in. You'll wanna put your cell phone number in, you'll wanna put in your email, and you'll see a couple of other data fields to fill in. When you hit submit, on the next page, what you'll see is um, an outline of what's about to happen. You'll see how our system is going to be taking those channels in the same way that Mike does, and then going out and engaging with you across a variety of channels, text messaging, email, ringless voicemail, so if you want to feel this stuff, if you actually want to try it yourself, jot that link down or go and try it now if you want as we're taking questions here. I'll leave that up here on the screen. McKinsey will drop it in the chat as well. Um, here's the link if you want to schedule some time to talk to us one-on-one, um, -on -one, uh, mindfiremarketing.com slash go. You can go there anytime um, to set up a time to talk to us. So I'm going to go to all of the questions that came in here. Um, first question, um, Mike, uh, are you doing the work and campaign creation execution for all customers, or do you have companies doing their work on the MindFire technology in their own sub account? Interesting. Uh, I would say 99% of the stuff either we do for them or we partner with you guys for custom services. Um, we've got, we've got a couple that actually will do it on their own um, in their own sub account. But again, most, nine times out of 10, our stuff is so custom that it's, you can't do it in your system. There's things that you have to do, but we do have some people that do it in their own, in, in a sub account, yes. Brett wanted to know from you, Mike, you showed your KM1, that beauty. What's the investment with the KM1? It's north of a million. Okay, so pocket change for you, Mike. <laughs> Left, <laughs> pocket. Said. Left pocket. Left <laughs> pocket. Uh, Brett asks here, what CRM do you use and what CRM do most of your clients use? Um, a lot of Salesforce, Ellie Mae, um, there, is, uh, there is quite a few. Um, ourselves, we have an internal one that we use. Um, we, probably need to adopt, we probably need to use it a little bit better, but we don't. We use, uh, we use a company called PipeDrive. Okay. Um, uh, we had a number of people asking you, Mike, this next question, which is interesting. Have you used AR with your direct mail? So augmented reality, for those who are wondering what that stands for. Uh, we haven't. Um, we, I think at one point in time, we did a print for a customer who had it on there. We just haven't pushed it. You know, to be honest with you, we've got our hands full with a lot of other things. We just haven't gone down that path. And um, honestly, we don't have a champion for that one yet. Um, Personally, I think it's there. I, I think it's similar to my opinion, and I might be way off, but my opinion, um, it's kind of where QR codes were eight or eight years ago. It's just mm -hmm. not quite there. And the, the expense for our customers who do high volume, I think, is, is, is too great right now. So, folks, if you have questions, anything on your mind, what we're doing right now is I'm reading through questions that McKinsey has pulled out of the chat, whether you're in LinkedIn or in Facebook or in Zoom. Keep your questions coming in. Type them in the chat wherever you are. On the screen, you have this little demo link. If you want to experience, get just a little taste of the promised land here with these digital channels, you can go there and try it out. And if you want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, have a private conversation with us around how direct mail with digital can help you grow your leads and sales, or if you're a service provider and you want to consider selling these to your clients, selling these types of campaigns, go there and let's have some time to talk together about it. Uh, next question that came in is, um, where are you mailing if most clients are remote and not in office? I know you talked a little bit about that, Mike, but that question came in again. Well, when I say where am I mailing? Like, I mean, where are you sending so the mail to? Yeah. Where, if, I'm where acquire, are you? If, if I'm trying to acquire them as a customer, um, we, we're actually doing a, a campaign right now. We're sending it to, again, their office. So, you know, some of the things that we're sending to, it's going to be it's going to be luck. Some people will get it forward. Sometimes someone will come and pick it up. Some people are still open for business. So we're trying to define those who we think are open for business and definitely send those. The ones we're not sure, we're just it's just going to be you know luck of the draw whether or not they get it or not. But any at this point in time, any kind of marketing right now is better than nothing. Thank you, Dan. I see Dan uh, grabbed a spot to talk um, further one on one. I see Brett did as well. Um, I see a number of you are grabbing those spots. Again, they're, they are limited in terms of our ability to 
uh, just be able to process the inbound of, of inquiries they get. But if you want to grab one of those spots, mindfiremarketing.com slash go is there on the screen. Um, from Matt P., Mike, he's saying, what about informed delivery? Are you engaging customers with ID campaigns and how are they working? We are, and we have a number of our customers using, uh, we have a number of our customers using it, um, not as, not as, not across the board of all of our customers. We have a handful that are using it. We, we're, we're doing a lot more mail tracking and doing some of the marketing behind the mail tracking. So when, 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 uh, you know, the mail tracking is scanned and we get a scan report, we're going to deploy mail. Um, I know there's some, there's some discounts for doing, for doing some of this stuff. Some customers are on board, some customers aren't. The bigger challenge we have is not whether or not they're on board is, again, it's a resource issue of being able to pull in some of the content they need to be able to put there on unfilmed delivery. Did anybody miss any of the resources um, that we had on the screen? We're going to be sending out Mike's contact information, uh, so stay tuned for that. That'll come to you in an email. Uh, we've got the, the next uh, session next week is on the social selling. If you want that link to that training to help you understand the modern ways of engaging your prospects and customers. If you need that training um, for you or for your team, let us know in the chat. Um, and then thirdly, if you want to experience this demo, uh, marketingsmissinglink.com, go there. Make sure you have your cell phone in your hand. I'm sure most of you already do. Turn on the ringer um, because you'll not only get a text message, but you will also get a ringless voicemail. You heard, uh, not, not a ringless voicemail, I'm sorry, a voice call. Uh, you've heard Mike talk about voice as part of the um, one of the channels that he employs, so you'll get to experience that. You'll actually hear me uh, give you a little message there, so try it out. Um, here's a question from John, my friend Miggs. He says, Mike, are many of your clients using machine learning or AI for customer, segment customer segmentation? I think we do have some. We, we are dealing with some of our customers' data, but majority of our customers are dealing with their data in-house. I believe some of them are, yes. Okay, wonderful. Over there in LinkedIn, if you have any um, specific questions over there in LinkedIn, McKenzie will, will pull those out. Make sure you go and ask those there in the LinkedIn chat so we can see it. Um, and uh, we wanna make sure that we answer everything that's on your mind, so stick around and drop those questions in. Uh, Brett is asking, Let's see, the previous webinar that you've done, is there a replay for that? So yes, Brett, uh, McKenzie, if you don't mind, I know you're probably doing a million things, but if you could get the link to the blog post from last week with Brian Gallad around LinkedIn, if you can put that in the chat for Brett and for the others. Um, uh, McKenzie, he's talking about the one with Brian Gallad. Yep, no problem, Brett. Other questions from the rest of you, John uh, Miggs, that, that was your question there for uh, Mike. Uh, folks, here's what I want to know from you. I have a question for all of you. If you've been in my sessions before, if you've been in any of our training, you know I always ask this question. Please answer this. Take a moment to answer the following question. What was the one or what were the two things that jumped out at you today? The unlocks, the ahas, the moments where you gained an insight that you will leave this meeting saying, I'm glad I was able to hear that. What were those things? Drop them into Facebook, drop it into LinkedIn. Please, please, please do that. Drop it into Zoom. I wanna read those back to Mike. I wanna encourage him in, and thank him for his time here. And I wanna know from you what those things were. That's very useful uh, information for us. So I wanna see those coming into Zoom. I wanna see those coming into um, to LinkedIn and to Facebook. And Mackenzie, keep the questions coming to me. I'm gonna try to um, get to as many of them as I can. I see somebody saying, I have to leave, but I would like to get connected with Mike. No problem. We are going to send you uh, the uh, contact information for him shortly. I see somebody saying, I want to sign up for the social selling training next week. How do I do that? Uh, if you go to OptiChannelMasterclass.com, I think McKinsey put that in the chat. You can go there. Um, I see somebody saying, I want to know how to get the list of the companies buying print. How do I do that? Uh, McKinsey did put that in the chat. That's also on our website, but we'll throw that back in the chat for you. Um, so you can go download those. I see a lot of people asking for the live training, which will be next week's class. Uh, let's see. What do we have here? So Scott is saying pearls with demographic lookups for personalized offers. That was his biggest takeaway, Mike. Um, Phil K said that Pearl and email, email being the most effective combination was the big unlock for him. Brett is saying, using pearls. I remember getting things from Dan Kennedy that included a pearl directly for me and thought that was awesome. Yeah, Dan Kennedy actually talks about pearls in one of his books. 
uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, Matt says, helping our customers bug them till they buy. Good stuff today. Well worth the time spent. I'm glad. I'm so glad, Matt. Sylvia is saying, I learned that we need to push our own integrated solutions to clients more through our marketing and that marketing to local businesses, even small ones, could be a viable business segment. Sylvia, that's fantastic. Please, folks, keep those coming in. We love seeing that feedback. Have you all gotten value from Mike? Give me a yes in the chat in Zoom over there in LinkedIn and Facebook. If you got value from Mike, Mike, I appreciate you st sticking around. Uh, Brett says he got a lot of value. Ryan got it. Hey, Ryan, Ryan got a lot of value. And again, folks, just to make you aware of the resources here that, are, that you're seeing here on the screen, if you want to experience or taste just a little bit of what Mike's been describing, if this is new to you or you just want to get a, a better feel for it, here's a demo that you can try, marketingsmissinglink.com. And if you want to talk further one-on-one -on -one about how, uh, you know, Mike's solutions can help you grow your leads and sales, or if you're a service provider and you want to start being like Mike and selling these to your clients, mindfiremarketing.com slash go, and we can set up some time to talk. Uh, Scott says, Mike, you've been very valuable and inspirational. Sarah says, thank you. Brett, uh, to you, Mike says, congratulations on all your success and continued success to continue. Uh, Drew is saying, this is some really cool and interesting ideas. I love the bug them till they buy. Mike, they love that one, huh? <laughs> Sarah is saying, bug them till they buy. I love that. How many of you like the uh, make direct mail great again hat? I'm really thinking we should get in the, in the uh, what is it called? Swag business, Mike? Yeah, that's what, that's where you'll see. Well, there's, there's still quite a bit of people on there, but that's where you'll see, you know, some opinions on that one, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> Brett says, I love the hat. Yeah, we still got a lot of people here. Just take it as a, we're, we're just two friendly guys here, guys. Don't, don't jump on us on the political side. Uh, Sylvia saying, I love the hat. Mig says, definitely want a hat. Yeah, I think we're missing our calling, Mike. We got to go into the swag business here. Um, yeah. Awesome. So Fred is saying, Dave, I just got your phone call um, from the demo site. And then your text overlapped with the phone call. Put a, maybe you want to put a bigger delay on that. Okay. Uh, great stuff. Bug them till they buy and great hat idea too. So Fred um, went through the experience at campaign. So when you do that, folks, you're going to get a text message. You're going to get a phone call from me. Um, you're going to see and taste um, what this stuff is all about. Uh, Mackenzie, if you can shoot me a text over there, let me know if there are any other questions. We're going to hang out here as long as um, we need to, to make sure we get all the questions answered. I'm going to look over um, at LinkedIn, I'm seeing people over there on LinkedIn saying uh, that it's so hard to reach people right now. It's so difficult to reach customers and prospects. Um, again, folks, that's why we're doing the training uh, next week. So the session that we're doing next week is going to be a, um, a deep dive into the four key areas in your social selling strategy. So if you're a salesperson, if you're a marketer, if you're a business owner, a business leader, and you just don't know how to use social to actually drive results, then you really got to be there. Um, because if, if you've tried it and it hasn't worked for you, or if you haven't done it at all, um, you know, unfortunately, this stuff doesn't come with a user manual, you know? And so you need someone to describe it to you. You need to understand how other people are doing it. And that's what we're going to be teaching you there in that class. All right. Questions, comments, um, anybody who wants to uh, set some time aside for us uh, to talk about this further one-on-one, -on -one, there's the link, mindfiremarketing.com slash go. Mike, anything that you want to ask the audience? Well, I just got a, I just got a, uh, a me I see the message on the thing from Mo. I guess I'm supposed to plug John's uh, 5B Ranch, huh? You see that from Mo? <laughs> yeah, sure. Go ahead. Oh, uh, no, you guys want to come to Texas and go hunting, fishing, uh, we got the place for you. Give us a shout. I think Miggs actually said earlier that he had been invited by John to go uh, to go shooting. Just as long yeah. as you don't have a, what was it, a Dick Cheney moment, Mike, and accidentally That's shoot right. somebody? Yep. That's right. right. That's Another right. political plug right there for you. Again, right. we, you know, we have a lot of fun. Dave, you and I have a lot of fun together. I, I appreciate you having me here. Guys, if, if you guys want to use the Mindfire solution, it's a great tool. Um, only advice I will give is, is, you know, more than likely it's not going to be out of the box. You know, there will be some that are, but most times it's probably not out of the box. You just need to be some forward thinking people on, on, on how to, to, to make it best work for your customer. Uh, Ruben is saying, and if you attend and schedule a weekly 5,000 continuity direct mail program, Summit Direct Mail will rush you a free make direct mail grade again hat. 
And will you sign that hat, Mike? That's what we want to know. Sure. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Upgrade to 10,000, and we will reserve you a spot on our private jet direct to Houston to go hunting with Mike and Dave. Are you going to hunt <laughs> Mike and Dave or hunting with Mike and Dave? Ammo not included. All right, Ruben. You're uh, the man. Funny. <laughs> that is funny. 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 Oh, I see a lot of you still here. Warren, Tyler, Tracy, Tom. Hey, Tom L., it's good to see you. Thanks for engaging me on Facebook as well, man. Hopefully that didn't get you too riled up there, the political talk. Uh, TJ, Thomas, Tammy, uh, uh, Stephen E., my friend, is here. Ralph, uh, Peter, Paul, uh, Mike, I'm just listing the names. Martin A., hey, Martin. Hopefully this has been helpful. Larry Trainer is here. Larry, what questions do you have? Jeff is here. Jeff C., actually two Jeff C.'s. David E. from HP is here. Wonderful. Chris Goff, it looks like you're still here, but I'm not sure that you're actually still here. Bill says, great session. Thank you, Dave. You're welcome. And folks over there in LinkedIn and Zoom and Facebook, going to give you one more opportunity here to um, set, a, set aside some time in the next couple of days. If you want to talk further about this, you can see the link here on the screen, mindfiremarketing.com slash go. If you want to take one of those slots, happy to talk to you further about your business and how you can be like Mike. Um, if you want to experience everything that we've been talking about here, marketingsmissinglink.com. Um, let's see. I don't know how to pronounce this name. Hopefully I'm getting it right. Dairy or dare. So I have a 336 pager planner for sports coaches. I was thinking of running a direct mail campaign to drive the sales of this book, a QR code to bring them directly to my online shop to purchase my uh, to my online shop to purchase in COVID times. Any advice on this? Uh, using my existing database from sports coaches over the last two years. Mike, what are your thoughts on that? That one's going to be difficult because there's a lot of schools that are doing remote learning. And um, I don't know how good the data is going to be because, like I said, data is going to be the key. So you definitely need to, to, to vet out your, your data. Make sure that because obviously direct mail, there's, it is expensive. It's worth it, but it's expensive. You just need to make sure that uh, that's as accurate as possible in, the, in, in that uh in that data because people a lot of a lot of uh, athletics are being canceled coaches aren't there coaches are moving so definitely it's definitely worthwhile to do if you got the right data uh and so dare sorry i'm so sorry if i mispronounce your name i see that you booked a time to talk to us we can oh dara okay forgive me dara forgive me um i see that you booked a time to talk to us we can go through that in greater detail with you i see dan um asked for some time to talk it through with us as well uh, David E. says, excellent session today. There are some very relevant learnings for our 3D printing service bureau. So, uh, Mike, as you know, and I think you actually have some 3D equipment. I don't know if you still have it there. Um, but you some to, here, yeah. you used to, yeah. Some uh, here with us are on the 3D side uh, via some of the work that we do with HP. So it's always good to see you, David, and uh, love working with you and your crew. Uh, maybe we got to do a similar session on, um, on 3D print as well. All right, folks, I'm going to wait another few minutes here. Mike, you've been so gracious with your time, man. I really appreciate it. No, not a problem. That, actually, the 3D printing, that, that was one of the things we had at our trade show booth. We actually uh, was, were, was printing, I think, I don't know if it was a screw or something, but we were printing something, and people, again, anything you can do to stand out, to stop true. by. We had yep. a bunch of people stop by just to sit there and watch that thing print. It was pretty cool. Yep. It, it was cool. I remember there was a line of people just craning their neck looking to see. Um <laughs> But that, that's something, it was a wrench, McKinsey says. Is that right? Yeah, probably, I think you're right. She remembers yeah. better than us, us old guys over here. All right, folks, what do you want to know? I'm going to hang on another few minutes here over there in LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn, folks, if you have any questions, you know, this is a golden opportunity to ask somebody who knows what they're talking about, who is an expert, um, and who can definitely help you grow your business. So if I missed any questions over there in LinkedIn or if McKinsey didn't pull them out, uh, paste it in again. Um, and she'll get it to me. Same thing in Zoom. If you've got a burning question that we didn't answer, paste it in. McKenzie, if you don't mind, give everyone my cell phone number again. I have been texting with a few people back and forth. If you don't mind dropping that in again, if you're in the, if you're in the print community here, if you're an agency, uh, if you're a marketing services provider and you want more uh, leads, if you want to be notified of opportunities, like the other day, we came across a lead in Reddit. And folks, if you're not on Reddit, um, you're missing out on lead opportunities. Um, but we took that lead and we texted it out to the people that are on this list saying, hey, uh, for some of you, this is going to be an opportunity. You might want to engage this person. So if you want to get those kinds of notifications, whether it be for Reddit or for LinkedIn, other places online, 
text me at the number um, that McKinsey is putting there, or, or if you're on your mobile, you can click that bit.ly link. Ruben saying you're running ads on LinkedIn. Yes, we do. Uh, I'm sorry, on Reddit. Yes, we do run ads on Reddit. I'm talking about um, organic posts though, uh, Ruben, in this case, meaning we're scouring the web. We find things, they come to us, people ask us for things. And uh, in this particular case, we happen to notice the lead sitting there on Reddit. Um, so that's what I'm referring to. But yes, we do run ads on Reddit as well. Um, okay, yeah, you're welcome. Experience it. Uh, campaign is here. The marketing's missing link.com. If you want to set aside some time to talk, uh, to talk, mindfiremarketing.com slash go. Let's give it another minute or two. Mackenzie, can you just text me? Or uh, sorry, put it in uh, Ring Central if you don't mind. Are we good on uh, any open questions over there in LinkedIn? And uh, make sure uh, that you don't miss next week's class, next week's uh, session. Again, it's going to be uh, the social selling playbook, the underground playbook that we've been talking about that's going to help you get into your customers and prospects mind in a way that you're probably completely unaware of. So go ahead and throw that back in the chat, Mac, if you don't mind, or Mackenzie, be fantastic. And I'm going to wait another 30 seconds. Any other questions, folks? Any other questions? Thank you for attending. I hope you got value out of this. If, you, uh, or if you're still awake and excited and, and getting value, please drop me a yes in the chat. I want to see the yeses in Zoom. Give the yeses. Ryan is asking you, uh, Mike, you don't have a way to append the work email address by the name of the prospect versus their personal email or cell phone or home address to redirect the mail piece? Hmm. Repeat that again. I'm trying to... I think Ryan, let's see, is there a way to append the work email address? Yeah, Ryan, can you restate that question again? I'm a little confused as well. I thought Mike would be the smart one and get it here. Hold on, is there a way I'm looking at now to append yeah. the work email address by the name of a... Yeah, Ryan, if you can just restate it a little bit more um, concisely, maybe. I, I could just be me trying to read it on the fly here. Ryan, I want to make sure I get an answer to your question there. We'll yeah, wait, I don't, we'll I don't... wait. I don't know. Um, that's actually a, a difficult one. Is there a way to append a, the work email address by the name of the prospect versus so, their personal? He says a way to take the customer's email address and look up their personal information. Sure, definitely. Yeah, Ryan, that, that, the answer to that is yes, absolutely. Like home address, cell phone, email, yes. There, there are ways to do that, yes. Um, Phil Kessler, are you still here? Um, Brett is asking you, Mike, do you use direct mail to get clients for your own business? Yes, we do. We're actually sending one out, uh, either this week or first of next week. So we do, we do it quite a bit. We don't do as much as we should, but yes, we do. Absolutely. We try to do it. We try to do something quarterly. Do you have the hot balls or whatever it's called there on your desk? So I want to show you something here. Uh, Brett, since I know Mike, what, what Mike's got in his office there, he knows what I'm referring to. I want to show you a campaign. There you go. Bring that up to the screen. There you go, baby. You want to describe that? So basically, we we did a campaign that was. Um, God, I'm trying to remember what it was. It was it was going after someone to to sign up, and we sent out we sent out fireballs. Um, people who responded to to anybody interested in mailing I, i'm trying to remember the exact words but we put in that we put in a, a package that had the fireballs a letter and our card and we sent it out and we got a pretty decent response i mean it was expensive package so obviously um they got to be very very well targeted people but it uh it worked pretty good we've got some leads um it, it was cool it's something again it's something it's something different that someone gets, I think these were like 10 or 12 bucks. So you're not going to be doing to tens of thousands of people, but, um, but it is somebody that's, you know, a super, super prospect. Uh, so Ryan, I see your question. I think the answer is yes to that, but Ryan, if you haven't yet set aside some one-on-one -on -one time, let's, let's continue that in a, in a conversation. Um, just, um, McKenzie, if you don't mind, give Ryan the link, let's grab one of the spots. Even if we're, we're out of uh, spots, let's make sure let's find some way to talk to Ryan about that. Okay, he says we're talking with McKenzie. Okay, yeah, Ryan, I just want to make sure we are understanding your question so that we get you an accurate answer. 
And if we can help, um, we'll obviously do that. Brett is saying back to you, Mike. Good. I like companies who believe in their own products. Yeah, Brett. Um, I mean, Mike, you all have used print for your own marketing and, and, and uh, promotion for, for many years. You obviously believe in your product. And personalized URLs, so we do a ton of those as well. Yep. Well, folks, you're still asking questions. I see Kevin N. is here. I see Kevin P., uh, Larry T., Les Bruno, uh, Mark G., Martin A. There's still a lot of you here, and I see people over there on LinkedIn. What's on your mind? Do you have any other questions? I'm going to give you another few moments to, to write a question. If you, say, if you have a question, but you just haven't figured out how to articulate it yet, let me know there in the chat so we don't disconnect. But I'm going to give you another moment or two. Ben, Wait, actually, any, yeah, yeah, ben, ac ben actually just sent me a message because I guess Ben's still on. He said he actually closed a couple of customers, pretty decent sized customers because of that. Because of the, uh, the fireballs. fireballs. Yep. Yep. Anybody want to see the fireballs again? If you want to see Mike's uh, fireballs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> if you want to see nice. the summit. Yeah. Nice, Dave. Yeah, nice. you're welcome. That's for you, Mike. Uh, there's the uh, fireball example there on the screen. Mike was holding it up to the camera. Um, if, if you have any other questions, uh, for me or for Mike, uh, if you want to talk one-on-one, -on -one, you have that link there in the chat. Uh, Ruben is asking, was that custom branded? So fireballs, this obviously comes with it. And the, the piece was coming with it. We actually, we actually threw stickers on there. I don't have mine. This actually was sent to me by a company wanting to, uh, wanting to buy my press. So again, nothing is, nothing is unique. You're always reading you know, stealing other people's stuff. That's the way it always works in business. You know, what works for somebody else is going to work for you. But uh, yeah, you can actually custom brand, you know, it's got the fireballs on one side, the in nutritional information, but the other panels had our uh, a label and stick, sticker we put on it to personalize it. So when it's on, when it's on your prospect's desk, they're going to see your name on there all the time. Did I, did we answer your question, Ruben? Hopefully that answered your question. He just said, wow, in the chat. So I think you, I think you got it. He says, I think, yep. All right, folks, what else is on your mind? Come on. Any other questions? This is a once in a uh, lifetime kind of opportunity to pick someone's brain. Um, Mike, did Ben have any other uh, insights or Ben, if you can hear us right now, anything else that you want to communicate? Ben is also uh, one of the, uh, I think Mike, you described him as your co-champion there um, at summit. Ben is, uh, like you, Mike, is just an incredible customer-focused, customer advocate. Um, never met anybody like Ben in terms of his focus and um, <laughs> passion in serving customers. That's uh, true. I, I know we give you a hard time, Ben, but it's because you're, you're, you're an animal, man. You're amazing at what you do. And uh, I know we tried to give you a heart attack the other night. That was just a little joke. Hopefully that was okay with you. We love you, um, and we appreciate you. So, folks, you have a wealth of knowledge on the other end here with Mike and his team. Any other questions? Ben just replied. He just said, I didn't make sure they identify problems and pick great partners. Love it. Love it. Bug them till they buy with the right partner. All right, Mike, any closing words? And then I'll close this up here. No, I appreciate the time. And uh, if there's anything I can do for anybody out there, you know, please feel free to reach out. Love to chat with you. And again, Mackenzie, Dave, thank you guys very much. It's our pleasure, Mike. Thank you to everyone who attended. Um, we appreciate you over here in Zoom. I appreciate you all who have been texting me over here. Um, oh, I just noticed some questions over here that I didn't see. Maybe, hopefully, Mackenzie got, got those. Um, wow. L Mike, let me get a few of these. Looks like maybe we did sure. get these questions. Yeah, do you have sure. another few minutes? Yeah, okay. absolutely. So first of all, love the hat. See that a bunch of times. Um, are you doing any measurement? This is, I think, around ROI measurement. Are you doing any measurement so as to take the issue of price somewhat off the table and focusing more on ROI? So I think this came in, Mike, when you were talking about how print buyers are looking for the lowest price, right? So yes, we, we actually partnered with an analytic company that did ran some data analytics for us. And we actually came back with some numbers on uh, the financial services. Uh, we significantly reduced the cost of acquisition of loans. Um, enough to where they're continuing to market and mail. Um, so yes, we we do uh, we do do that. We do we do measure, uh, and we do share with the customer. Uh, just a little encouragement for KY and I think others. Um, sorry, we missed these folks. Hope you didn't have to drop off. But said, um, look, I'm having a really tough time. I've been in print for 25 years as an offset printer in New York City. What kind of encouragement would you have for somebody like that, Mike? 
you know, just same, I mean, same thing we have. I mean, we, we are all struggling. I mean, you've got to think outside the box, anything you can do. If you're in New York City, I'm assuming you're probably calling on people in New York City. You know, I don't know how open New York City is, is uh, but if it's somewhat open, you know, go bang on the door. You know, um, if you're local, I mean, we do that as well. There's there's places that we go and bang on the door. If it's a good opportunity and, you know, we'll go do that as well. Um, okay, why? if you're still here, let me know in the chat. Let us know over there in the chat. I want to talk to you a little bit more. Uh, Warren is saying, I managed to miss the whole thing <laughs> as it's 5.45 a.m. in New Zealand. Would there be a video to download later? Yes, Warren, for you and the rest, there certainly will be a video. I'm actually pitching a massive digital donor journey campaign using MindFire and a bunch of API plugins today. Exciting stuff. Awesome. Wow. Good for you, Warren. Um, Warren is also asking, can we follow what the story from Facebook or Instagram to a landing page to keep the variability flowing through the digital journey? Warren, I think there's a couple of words mis uh, type there or or whatnot, but I think Mike, what he's saying is, look, can, is there any way to to know that somebody's coming from Facebook or Insta or email so that we can use that within the digital journey of what they then see on the screen? Thoughts on that? Uh, there is um, obviously you can have unique landing pages. So if you drive people to personalized URLs, obviously Facebook is a, can't be a personalized URL, but you can generate unique pages to your Perl. So when they come in, you know, they come, you can, again, attribution, you can attribute it to Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. We're sorry, folks. We missed your questions over there. I didn't see them. Um, it looks like we missed a couple over there, but hopefully it looks like KY, you're still here. Your hand is up. Um, but I think we, uh, we answered it. If uh, I don't see anything else coming here in the chat, um, I'm seeing thank you from many people. Thanks, gentlemen. I'll reach out to you individually. Take care. Uh, wonderful. So as I was uh, kind of closing up there, it looks like a few other questions came in. Appreciate those. Uh, folks, please join us next week. Like I said at the start, um, we are committed to bringing you this kind of value every week throughout the rest of the year. Um, there's a couple holidays in, in, in between there and such that are going to uh, change the schedule a little bit. It's usually going to be around Thursday, um, sometime Thursday. So make sure you're on our list. Make sure you follow us on social, on LinkedIn, um, so that you get those notifications if this has been useful to you. The only reason to attend is if, if it's uh, bringing you value, and I hope it has. Um, and so with that, Again, I want to thank John Barber, Mike Robinson, Ben Shank, and all of the wonderful folks over at Summit Direct Mail. Mike, thank you for being the ambassador this morning and representing that company well. I'm sure everybody is proud of you. And thank you to everyone who showed up today and everyone who's watching this, this replay later. We appreciate you taking time. If you have any questions, you'll certainly know how to reach out to us. We'll make sure you have that information. And we will see you all very soon. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye, everyone.